Tonight, the race for the White House takes flight. Welcome to the first debate of the 2024 presidential campaign. Please switch the tab size so Chad doesn't cover the video. You autistic fuck. It's going to be harder to read the text than it is to be watching the fucking video, you fucking morons. I'm big banning people that are saying shit like this. ...and have chosen to be here on our debate stage tonight. They are here to lay out their vision for America, the battle as they battle for the GOP nomination. Good evening, everybody. I'm Martha McCall. And I'm Brett Baer. This is the very same stage on which the Republican choice for president will accept the party's nomination <coughs> next summer. The eight contenders are positioned by the order they sit in the polls, with the highest polling candidates in the middle standing center stage. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. <laughs> Nice. Former Vice President Mike Pence. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. <laughs> Former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson. And North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum. I'll fill this in later. Burgum? I think I fucking butchered half these names. Some ground rules for tonight. We'll ask the questions, and then candidates get one minute to answer. Uh, if someone is singled out, you get 30 seconds to respond. And when the time runs out, we all will hear this. <laughs> Very pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, these candidates have a big opportunity to break out of the pack and to explain why they are best prepared to be the Republican choice for president at a time when the likely Democrat nominee, President Joe Biden, is working to convince the country that with Bidenomics, things are looking up. Uh, hello? Anybody else having problems? We call my plan Bidenomics. I'm not sure they meant it in a totally complimentary way at the time. <laughs> but guess what? It's worth but is it more than 65 percent of americans say the country is headed in the wrong direction and here's the reality for some voters we talked to here in wisconsin this week we have noticed a dramatic increase in prices at the grocery store just across the board gas is high and food is high it's a lot of people out here homeless because they can't buy food it's tough when you got mortgage rates at 70 percent versus two to three it's just you can't afford the house anymore it's inflation is, is ridiculous. It's killing us out here. As we sit here tonight, the number one song on the Billboard chart is called Rich Men North of Richmond. It is by a singer from Farmville, Virginia, named Oliver Anthony. His lyrics speak of alienation, of deep frustration with the state of government and of this country. Washington, D.C. is about a hundred miles north of Richmond. These rich men north of Richmond, Lord knows they all just want to have total control. Want to know what you think, want to know what you do, and they don't think you know, but I know that you do. Cause your dollar ain't shit, and it's tax to no end. So, Governor DeSantis, why is this song striking such a nerve in this country right now? What do you think it means? Our country is in decline. This decline is not inevitable. It's a choice. We need to send Joe Biden back to his basement and reverse American decline. And it starts with understanding we must reverse Bidenomics so that middle-class families have a chance to succeed again. We cannot succeed as a country if you are working hard and you can't afford groceries, a car, or a new home while Hunter Biden can make hundreds of thousands of dollars on lousy paintings. That is wrong. We, we also cannot succeed when the Congress spends trillions and trillions of dollars those rich men north of Richmond have put us in this situation. And finally, we need to lower your gas prices. We're going to open up all energy production. We will be energy dominant again in this country. I showed it could be done in the state of Florida. 
I pledge to you as your president, we will get the job done, and I will not let you down. Is it that much more gas that we have access to in the U.S.? Governor Christie, do you agree with Governor DeSantis just said there? And why would you be better on the economy than him? Well, look, I do agree predominantly with what Governor DeSantis just laid out. I think that if you asked every one of us up here that we would agree predominantly with what he just laid out. Here's the difference. The difference is that we're going to have to work and make sure that we sell these ideas. And we able to be able to put ourselves in a position where we get a majority of the vote, not only by winning the Congress and the Senate in the 24, but also by having someone who's had the experience of doing it. Now, I was elected as a conservative Republican in a blue state with 61 percent of the vote with a Democratic legislature against me the entire time. And we still, through hard, strong decision making, brought them around to our point of view. We cut taxes in New Jersey. We cut debt in New Jersey. We made sure that each and every time we were confronted with bad democratic ideas, we stood and stopped them. And when there were good ideas, we brought people together to make progress going forward. Truth and accountability are the things we need to do to fight waste. And I'd say the last thing is this, Brett, we cannot sit by any longer and allow the kind of spending that's going on in Washington, because every dollar they spend is a dollar that these people are not allowed to spend on their children and their grandchildren. It's robbing our country and it's wrong. Well, Governor, let me just follow up very quickly. New Jersey, when you were governor, had the second lowest credit rating in the nation after Illinois. Damn. It was downgraded 11 times. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's what happens when you inherit a blue state that has done that. But when you look at what we did on debt, Brett, in that state, we cut debt in that state, debt that had been left to us by three Democratic gubernatorial predecessors of mine who ran up that debt tremendously. And what you also saw us do was to cut the unemployment rate in half. It was over 10 percent when I became governor in 2010. What we also did was cut pension payments to public employees to make sure that taxpayers Jesus. were not being soaked by a public Jesus. employee union system that was killing the taxpayer. Thank you, Governor. Governor Scott, I mean, Tim Scott, Senator Scott, excuse me. Uh, the song also goes after welfare programs. As a senator, now President Biden, argued for freezing federal spending, this was back in the 80s, and dealing with sacred cows. He does not talk about that anymore. You have been a senator, though, for 10 years. So what have you done to rein in the increasing size of government? Well, thank you for the question. Over the last several years, I've had an opportunity to vote against spending package after spending package after spending package. What we also need to understand is that Joe Biden's Biden nominees has led to the loss of $10,000 of spending power for the average family. When you see 16% inflation, your gas is up 40%, your food is up 20%, your electricity is up 20%. We can stop that by turning the spigot off in Washington, sending the money back to the states and allowing the decisions to be made at their own houses. I helped write the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in 2017. We cut taxes for a single mom like the one that raised me by 70%, for dual households by 60%, returning to the average family $4,000. If you don't send it to Washington, we can't spend it. That's good news for the American people. Okay, but just to, to follow up, you did, during the Trump administration, you approved uh, 4.4 trillion, 4.1 trillion, 1.7 trillion over the course of that administration. That's a lot of money. There's no doubt that during the Trump administration, when we were dealing with the COVID virus, we spent more money. But here's what happened at the end of our time in the majority. We had low unemployment, record low unemployment, three and a half percent for the majority of the population, 70, 70 year low for women. African-Americans, Hispanics and Asians had a all time low, but our inflation was at 2%. Under Joe Biden, we've seen the exact opposite. We've seen inflation explode, which led to 12 Federal Reserve increases that's devastating home buyers today. Mr. Ramaswamy, you're listening to if these I, answers. If I may, no, I mean, hold on one second. We're, we're going to, uh -oh. so I, I don't know if I get a he chance to respond. He didn't mention you specifically, but we'll be with you in a second, Mr. Vice President. Uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, listening to all of this, why should voters choose you? 
over more experienced politicians on this stage. Uh, you're basically, you know, a blank slate for people. You're 38 years old. Uh, you said that you only voted in two presidential elections before this moment, this political race. So first, let me just address a question that is on everybody's mind at home tonight. Who the heck is this skinny guy with a funny last name, and what the heck is he doing in the middle of this debate stage? I'll tell you, I'm not a politician, Brett. You're this right guy looks like he's that. a lot of teeth. I'm an entrepreneur. My parents came to this country with no money 40 years oh, ago. Oh, he's Andrew Yang. I have gone for the Republicans. On to found multi-billion dollar companies. I did it while marrying my wife, Apoorva, raising our two sons, following our faith in God. That is the American dream. And I am genuinely worried that that American dream will not exist for our two sons and their generation unless we do something about it. And I do think Brett is going to take an outsider because for a long time we have professional politicians in the Republican Party who have been running from something. Now is our moment to start running for to something. something. Oh, shit. To our vision of what it means to be an American today. If you have a broken car, you don't turn over the keys to the people who broke it again. You hand it over to a new generation to actually fix the problem. That's why I'm in this race and we're just getting warmed up. All right, to you, Governor Haley. So why are you better positioned to turn around this economy that we've heard all of these voters talking about tonight than Mr. Ramaswamy, who is a successful entrepreneur nationally right now? He's beating you in the polls. Well, I don't care about polls. What I care about the fact is that no one is telling the American people the truth. The truth is that Biden didn't do this to us. Our Republicans did this to us, too. When they passed that $2.2 trillion COVID stimulus bill, they left us with 90 million people on Medicaid, 42 million people on food stamps. No one has told you how to fix it. I'll tell you how to fix it. They need to stop the spending. They need to stop the borrowing. They need to eliminate the earmarks that the Republicans brought back in. And they need to make sure they understand these are taxpayer dollars. It's not their dollars. And while they're all saying this, you have Ron DeSantis, you've got Tim Scott, you've got Mike Pence. They all voted to raise the debt. And Donald Trump added $8 trillion to our debt and our kids are never going to forgive us for this and so at the end of the day you look at the 2024 budget republicans asked for 7.4 billion in earmarks democrats asked for 2.8 billion so you tell me who are the big spenders i think it's time for an accountant in the white house vice president pence you were mentioned there um, 54% of voters say the cost of groceries is a quote major problem for them Right. You blame the Biden administration spending for that increase. But as vice president, your administration spent more than any prior, $7.8 trillion added to the national debt, $3.5 trillion of that before COVID. So does that mean that you're part of the spending problem? Well, first off, thanks for the question. Thanks for letting me respond to a re reference to our re administration's record. I'm incredibly proud of the record of the Trump-Pence administration. I mean, in four short years we rebuild our military we revived our economy we unleashed american energy and we appointed three conservatives to the supreme court that gave the american people a new beginning for the right to life now martha you asked earlier who's the most best prepared for this job and i must tell you with all due respect to all of my friends on the stage and even to one that's probably looking on i think unquestionably i am the best prepared the most tested, the most qualified and proven conservative in this race. I was a leader in the Congress of the United States. I led Indiana where we balanced budgets and had a AAA bond rating when I was governor. And as vice president of the United States, we spent funding to, to backfill on the, the, the military cuts of the Obama administration. And then we were there in the worst pandemic uh, in 100 years. All that being said, I was the first person in this race to say that we've got to deal with the long-term national debt issues. You've got people on this stage that won't even talk about issues like Social Security and Medicare. I mean, Vivek, you recently said uh, a president can't do everything. Well, I got news for you, Vivek. I've been in the hallway. I've been in the West Wing. A president in the United States has to confront every crisis facing America. I will put our nation back on the path to growth and prosperity and restore fiscal responsibility, just as I did in Congress and as governor Mr. Vice President. and when I was vice president.
But yeah, I mean, we've had on. spot yeah. since I was since since You were named was earlier. Vote. I'm going to get Vivek first. We'll get to both. Yeah, this isn't that complicated, guys. Unlock American energy, drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear. Put people back to work by no longer paying them more to stay at home. Reform the U.S. Fed, stabilize the U.S. dollar, and go to war. The only war that I will declare as U.S. President will be the war on the federal administrative state that is the source of those toxic regulations acting like a wet blanket on the economy. So I'm not sure I exactly understood Mike Pence's comment, but I'll let you all parse that out. For me, it's pretty simple. That's something a U.S. President can do with focus, and I'll deliver on no, it. Let me explain it to you. Let me explain it to you, if I can. I'll go slower this time. I, you know, I, I sometimes struggle with the reading comprehension. Look, I was, a, I was a House conservative <laughs> leader before it was what? cool. I actually pushed the Deficit Reduction Act. That was the last time we actually reduced the national debt in the United States when I was the leader of House conservatives. I balanced budgets and cut taxes when I was governor. I mean, look, Joe Biden has weakened this country at home and abroad. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. We don't need to bring in people without experience. We need to bring people without experience. This is this gentleman. Wait a second. It's 30 seconds when you have a rebuttal, okay? And, and you are up, Governor DeSantis. So here's the thing. Why are we in this mess? Part of it and a major reason is because how this federal government handed COVID-19 by locking down this economy. It was a mistake. It should have never happened. And in Florida, we led the country out of lockdown. We kept our state free and oh. open. And I can tell you this, as your president, I will never let the deep state bureaucrats lock you down. You don't take somebody like Fauci and coddle him. You bring Fauci in, you sit him down, and you say, Anthony, you are fired. I just want to respond to Mike for one second because he invoked me back. Listen, now that everybody's gotten their memorized, pre-prepared slogans out of the way, we can actually have a real discussion now. The, the, the reality and the fact of the matter This guy's is, got a lot of slogans years. memorized. You know, not, not really, Mike, actually. Yeah. We're just going to have some fun tonight. And the reality is you have a bunch of people, professional politicians, super PAC puppets, following slogans handed over to them by their 400-page super PACs last week. The real choice we face in this primary is this. Do you want a super PAC puppet or do you want a patriot who speaks the truth? Do you want incremental reform, which is what you're hearing about, or do you want revolution? Okay. And I stand on the side of the American the revolution. I've got to address we're going to take capitalism. control back here. We need everyone Remember? to have a moment on the economy. Yeah. Uh, I think that's fair. Can I address the COVID uh, there are two people who have not. We're going to no. get back to that. We are. Uh, there are two people who we have not heard from yet. No. So let's hear from Governor Burgum and then from Governor Hutchinson on the economy, sir. Well, great. Thank you, Martha. And of course, uh, <laughs> I'm from a eyebrows. town of 300 people. It's a big deal to make it on this stage with all these folks. Uh, but. <laughs> But when they were, they were all wishing me well, uh, and I think I took them a little too literally when they said, go to Milwaukee and break a leg. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice joke, dude. I do want to say uh, uh, on this, we're missing something. We can't just talk about the Biden economy because the economy, energy, and national security are all tied together. We, of course, we're paying too much for our energy in our, in our state, right, in our country right now. But part of the reason why is because of the Biden policies on energy. We've got a plan right now, the $1.2 trillion of Green New Deal spending buried in the Inflation Creation Act is something that is just subsidizing China. We're, if we're going to stop buying oil from the Middle East and start buying batteries from China, we're just trading OPEC for Sinopec. And then belatedly, belatedly, the, the Biden administration says, no, we're going to put sanctions on Russian oil. Well, we put sanctions on Russian oil. Well, then it's 20% off. Who's buying it? China. So if you buy a battery in this country, you buy a solar panel, it's being produced in a, power, in a plant in China powered by coal, or it's being powered by oil and gas at 20% off. And every farmer in this country would like to buy diesel at 20% off, just like they're buying it in China. Governor Hutchison, quickly. Thank you, Grant. Delighted to be here tonight. And let me just tell you that I'm a pro-life governor from a conservative state the that has a conservative guy? record in which I lowered taxes in Arkansas as governor. Uh, I created a $2 billion surplus that I passed over to my successor, and I made sure that we shrunk the size of government. 
We have 14 percent fewer state employees in Arkansas <coughs> after I left government than when I took over as governor eight years ago. I tell that because that's what we need in Washington, D.C. We need somebody who can actually constrain the growth of the federal government that can actually reduce the size, and I've pledged to reduce by 10 percent our federal non-defense workforce. That's a specific pledge to make that attacks the administrative state. And let me applaud some of the business partners that are here that have had success in business. But let me tell you, I've been a federal prosecutor. I've served our country in terms of being head of the DEA, in homeland security, in times of crisis. And while I think that that's experience that is important for the future of our country to be the president of the United States that can lead with positive solutions to be held accountable. Okay. Thank you. I think we Vivek is going to have the best performance to tonight. If you're betting on this anywhere, my money is absolutely on Vivek. Okay, I think he's going to crush it tonight. That's my guess. More than a thousand people are still unaccounted for in Maui uh, after the deadliest U.S. wildfire in more than a century. Hawaii's governor and White House officials said that climate change amplified the cost of human error. And a tropical storm hit California for the first time in 84 years. The ocean hit 101 degrees off the coast of Florida. And in the last month, the heat wave in the southwest broke records nearly 50 years old. So Alexander Diaz from Young America's Foundation has a question for you all. Polls consistently show that young people's number one issue is ben climate Shapiro. change. How will you, as both president of the United States and leader of the Republican Party, calm their fears that the Republican Party doesn't care about climate change? So we want to start on this with a, a show of hands. Do you believe in human behavior is causing climate change? Raise your hand if you do. Well, look, we're not school children. Let's have the debate. I mean, I'm happy to take it to start. <laughs> Alexander, <laughs> so do you want to raise your hand? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. the way to do. So let me just say to Alexander this. First of all, one of the reasons our country's decline is because of the way the corporate media treats Republicans versus Democrats. Biden was on the beach while those people were suffering. He was asked about it. He said, no comment. Are you kidding me? As somebody that's handled disasters in Florida, you got to be activated. You've got to be there. You've got to be present. You've got to be helping people who are doing this. And yeah. here's the deal. Yeah. Let's just answer the question. So yeah. is that a yes or is that a yes? Is that a hand raise? You do not. I think it was a hand raise for him, and it's um, my hands are in my pockets. No, no, no. I didn't raise, agenda, I didn't raise a hand. Let us be because honest what? as Republicans. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change oh, agenda whoa, 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 whoa. is a oh, hoax. Oh, the climate this change is agenda is a hoax. And we have to declare mm. independence for it. And the reality oh, is, the anti-carbon agenda is the wet blanket on our economy. And so the reality is, more people are dying of bad climate change policies than they are of actual climate change. Governor, right, Governor well, Haley, are you bought the and paid for? Is down by hold on, hold on. In the last century. Listen, look, listen, listen. Had, no, Let, enough, wait, no, hold on, hold I've on. I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough already tonight of a guy who sounds like Chat GPT <laughs> standing up here. Chris, Chris, he's so good at the attacks. The last person in one of these debates, Brett, who stood in the middle of the stage and said, what's a skinny guy with an odd last name doing up here was Barack Obama, and I'm afraid we're dealing with the same type of amateur standing in the stage. Oh! <laughs> Give me a hug just same, like you did to Obama. The same type of amateur. And, and you'll help elect me just like you did to Obama, too. Give me that same hug, type of amateur. Hey, Brett, Go, hold on, hold on. Hey, Governor Haley, would you like to respond? Reserves. Are you so bought Brett, and paid what for? what I would like to say is the fact that I think this is exactly why Margaret Thatcher said, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. First of all, we do care about clean air, clean water. We want to see that taken care of, but there's a right way to do it. And the right way to do it is, first of all, yes, is climate change real? Yes, it is. But if you want to go and really change the environment, Jeez. then we need to start telling China and India that they have to lower their emissions. That's where our problem is. And these green subsidies that Biden has put in 
All he's done is help China because he does the wild card all these tonight. She could also have a standout done, performance. What that does. Haley and Vivek the are the two to look out for. That's my guess. Are made in China. And so that's not helping the environment. You're putting money in China's pocket. And Biden did that. So first of all, I think we need to acknowledge the truth, which is these subsidies are not working. We also need to take on the international world and say, OK, India and China, you've okay. got to stop polluting. And that's when we'll start right. to deal with Senator China. Scott, are you bought and paid for? Absolutely. Are you bought and paid for? <laughs> Absolutely. Sorry. Are you bought and paid Absolutely for? Absolutely not. I mean, it, it, here's what the American people deserve is a debate about the issues that affect their lives. Going back and forth being childish is not helpful to the American people. What's his guy's name again? The next leader of our country. Number one, wait a second. Number two, as a kid who grew up in a single parent household mired in poverty, I wonder, was the American dream real for kids? who are devastated by poverty, devastated by the challenges of life. I came to the conclusion that America can do for anyone what she's done for me if we focus on restoring hope, creating opportunities, and protecting America. If we want the environment to be better, and we all do, the best thing to do is to bring our jobs home from China. If we create 10 million new jobs in my Made in America plan, we will have a better economy and a better environment. Let me tell you why I say that, Brett. America, <laughs> quickly. America has cut. I'm a Southern boy, I talk slow. So America, America. Gee, they double, that was double quick. dung it. America has cut our carbon footprint in half in the last 25 years. The places where they are continuing to increase, Africa, 950 million people. India over a billion, China over a billion. Why would we put ourselves at a disadvantage, devastating our own economy? Let's bring our jobs home. We have a lot of okay. different topics to get yep, to. Yeah, we do. We thank you all. Thank you, Senator Scott. So coming up next, the candidates will weigh in on what could be a defining issue in the 2024 campaign. <clears throat> um. Continues moments away. These surveys are such a sh clusterfuck because they have so many fucking people. Um, something that I think is interesting is... Um, it, it's interesting to see, like, the Trump faction versus the anti-Trump faction versus, like, the new Trump faction. So, like, Haley is, like, marketing herself basically as... I guess she's trying to appeal to, what, conservatives that don't support Trump? Or is she, trying, is she hoping that people are going to fold back into the conservative party away from Trump? It sounds like that's what Nikki Haley is aiming for. I don't know how many of those conservatives exist. Um, Pence is... It's funny because Pence is... I don't know if Pence is anti-Trump, but Pence is trying to separate himself from Trump's record quite a bit. Notice how when Pence is talking positively about himself, he's talking about the good things about his record in Congress and the good things about his record in um, in Indiana, <laughs> rather than like what he did under Trump or as vice president. I thought that was kind of funny. And then Vivek here is like the new Trump. This is our this is our new younger. When people were like, "What are the new era of politicians going to look like after Trump?" I think Vivek is is going to be maybe an example of what we're going to see. So snappy slogans like Bernie Sanders, the witty remarks, not as witty as Trump, but back and forth with other people, the high energy, the, um, yeah, like ba basically the, <clears throat> what did he say? Incremental form versus revolution. Vivek seems to be like the new age, like Trumpy figure. And then Chris Christie is our submarine that kind of lurks around looking to torpedo other people like he did to Rubio last time. And yeah, interesting. <clears throat> You're up for debate season with a GOP like foam finger and a beat. I think it's good for Vivek, even if, he, even if he doesn't pull out of his, it's good for Vivek too that on a stage with a lot of people, he's definitely trying to set himself apart by fighting with every other person. That's also good too. Um, I like that he, I like that he's ready to fight with everybody. I'm the only motherfucker on this stage that's not bought and paid for. And you even, you even heard the booze on that because obviously there's a lot of fans from other people on the, uh, on the stage, but it's, it's interesting that he's trying so hard to set himself apart from every other candidate. <clears throat> Thoughts on DeSantis so far? I don't know. He's wholly uninspiring. Um, DeSantis, I would get maybe like fourth or fifth. I think like right now the most interesting people are Vivek. Haley is interesting. Again, Haley, just because of her trying to set herself apart. Chris Christie's got his good zingers. Um, I, I don't know. DeSantis is just not that inspiring. Pence isn't either, although he's got like that traditional boy. But... Yeah, DeSantis is giving... I get Jeb Bush vibes from him. 
I thought DeSantis was supposed to be charismatic. No, DeSantis has always had charisma problems. When you watch him work crowds, it's really, really rough. Rumble has to be a place that welcomes everybody, where you'll feel free to be who you are, where you respect another person's freedom. Trump still wins primary at this point. Him or Vivek? Well, we have no idea. Trump is a wild card still. We don't know where anything's going to go on. <clears throat> Getting Marco Rubio vibes from DeSantis, just very obvious for his talking points. It seems like it. I wonder if Chris Christie's going to go for a, a, a Rubio <laughs> attack. <laughs> We'll see. Called Deepak, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, I see you streaming YouTube. I, maybe I'll stream the next one to YouTube. But if I if I get struck, if they do decide to copyright strike, which they have historically done for debates, if they do decide to copyright strike, I'm, I'm not streaming on YouTube for seven days. So it's just it's a really big risk. I don't think it's necessarily worth the risk of doing it. Um, so yeah. I feel like for a lot of these, um, I feel like for a lot of these debates, as silly as it sounds. I really do think charisma is like almost the most important thing. And Vivek is oozing charisma. He's like above and beyond everybody else on the stage. Chris Christie is relatively charismatic, but I don't know why, what it is inside of me, but Chris Christie to me feels like a Democrat. Just the way that he talks, the way that he moves, the way that he, I don't know why I get that feeling. He doesn't feel like, he just feels like a Democrat to me. I, I wonder if other conservatives feel the same way, I'm not sure. Maybe because he's from New Jersey, I don't know. <laughs> abortion law as well, especially the impact on women suburban voters across this country. Thank you, Martha. I am unapologetically pro-life, not because the Republican Party tells me to be, but because my husband was adopted and I had trouble having both of my children, so I'm surrounded by blessings. Having said that, we need to stop demonizing this issue. This is talking about the fact that unelected justices didn't need to decide something this personal because it's personal for every woman and man. Now it's been put in the hands of the people. That's great. When it comes to a federal ban, let's be honest with the American people and say it will take 60 Senate votes. It will take a majority of the House. So in order to do that, let's find consensus. Can't we all agree that we should ban late-term abortions? Oh, that's Can't my position. Can't we all agree Damn. that we should encourage adoptions? Can't we all agree that doctors and nurses who don't believe in abortion shouldn't have to perform them? Can't we all agree that contraception should be available? And can't we all agree that we are not going to put a woman in jail or give her the death penalty if she gets an abortion? Let's treat this like the like a respectful issue that it is and humanize the situation and stop demonizing the Jesus. situation. Jesus. Brett. Oh, I agree with that answer. Governor DeSantis. And the audience did. <laughs> a six-week abortion ban in Florida. Jesus. Uh, one of your biggest financial backers said that you need to, quote, shift to get moderates or you will lose. What do you say to him and others who say politically? Is that, that true is in Florida right now? Is abortion cash? illegal? Well, I would say we sold uh, the biggest election landslide victory in the history of the Republican Party in the state of Florida in 2022. That's what I did. We can win. But second of all, look, um, you got to do what you think is right. I believe in a culture of life. Jesus. Uh, I was proud to sign the heartbeat bill. Uh, I remember one of the most impactful moments of my life was when I heard the heartbeat of my oldest daughter uh, in my wife's womb and then saw the sonograms of all three of my kids. What the That's Democrats essentially a ban on abortion. To That's essentially a total ban on abortion. It's <laughs> wrong to allow abortion all the way up to the moment of birth. I know a lady in Florida named Penny. She survived multiple abortion attempts. She was left discarded in a sorry, pan. Not funny. Fortunately, so her grandmother saved her and brought her to a different hospital. We're better than what the Democrats are selling. We are not going to allow abortion all the way up till birth, and we will hold them accountable for their extremism. But just to we be clear, hold, Governor, I like would you sign a six-week ban federally? 
I'm going to stand on the side of life. Look, I understand Wisconsin is going to do it different than Texas. I understand Iowa and New Hampshire are going to do different. But I will support the cause of life as governor and as president. We, we Vice President Pence, a, you're shaking we your must head. Have a Nash hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Senator. Make Vice him president answer that. Pence, you're shaking your head. What, well, look, I'm, I'm not new to this cause. After I gave my life to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I opened up the book and I read, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And see, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses, now choose life. And I knew from that moment on, the cause of life had to be my cause. And I've been a champion for life in the Congress, a champion for life as governor and as vice president. And uh, to be honest with you, Nikki, you're my friend, but uh, consensus is the opposite of leadership. When the Supreme Court returned this question to the American people, they didn't just send it to the states only. It's not a states only issue, it's a moral issue. And I promise you, as President of the United States, the American people will have a champion for life in the Oval Office. Can't we have a minimum standard in every state in the nation that says when a baby is capable of feeling pain, an abortion cannot be allowed. A 15-week ban is an idea whose time has come. It's supported by 70% of the American people, but it's going to take unapologetic That was basically her position. <laughs> that stands on principle Why did he say, before I knew you in the womb? What? Okay. In crisis well, hold on. pregnancies, I'll do that as President of the United States. He my name, so How did he do all of that speech for a 15-week so ban on abortion? Say, it is in the hands what? of the people, and that's where it should be. But when, when you're talking about a federal ban, be honest with the American people. I am we haven't honest. had four 45 pro-life senators in over 100 years. So no Republican president Ooh. can ban abortions any more than a Democrat president could ban all those state laws. Don't make women feel like wow, they Matrix have user. to decide Thanks on this issue when you know we don't have 60 Senate votes in the House. 70% of the American people The American people don't vote in the Senate. Hit them on that. But 70% of the Senate, Senate does not. Yes! Okay. Say it again. Don't let them cut you off. Don't let them mansplain you. 70% of the Senate does not. You have to be honest with the we American people. True. Let, let's get process, process, process. Good job, um, Haley. So, but the Supreme Court did overturn Roe v. Wade. And, and the, the result of that decision was that it went back to the states. So that's where it is right now. So as I understand it, you are not in favor of a federal ban. What do you say Who's this guy about again? the states? There's about five of them, including New Jersey, I think uh, a few others. Is this Aza? That allow Aza? abortion up Hutchinson? until the time of birth, though. If you were president, would you be able to abide that? Oh, uh, Burgum. Well, first of all, I'm a pro-life governor of a very pro-life state. And this is issue is, of course, very important. But I am on the record, and I stand behind that we should not have a federal abortion ban. Uh, we should not. And the reason why we shouldn't is very simple. It's the 10th Amendment in the Constitution. In the Constitution, which the states created the federal government, not the other way around, it says that there were certain duties allowed to the federal government delegated to them by the states. The rest are left to the states, comma, or importantly, or to the people. We need to get back to freedom and liberty for the people in this country. And we can't have, we can't have Republicans who fight for 50 years for this great cause and to return it back to the states and then the next day they turn around and go, no, the feds should do that because the feds are stepping into people's lives. They're stepping into people's businesses over and over. If we say that the feds should be in on this one, where do we stop? I say that we follow the Constitution and this is returned to the states. This is where it should but be. But Governor Burgum, you signed a six-week ban. Time out. You signed a six-week ban. Governor Burgum, you signed a six-week ban. So you're saying- Damn, how many states have outlawed abortion right now? What the fuck? Yes, and what what is going to work in New York will I never work in up. North Dakota, okay. and vice versa. That's Governor why 50 Asa states. That's right why 50 here. states. This, this is too important of an issue that I have to address. Damn. Uh, first of all, My the God. Supreme Court gave it back to the elected representatives, whether it's the states or whether it's the United States Congress. That's so right. there is authority, and that's why President Biden is pushing for a Democrat proposal, which is, in essence, abortion on demand through the term so they have their extreme position at a national level we it's most likely going to be addressed in the states but it's certainly fine for it to be addressed at the national level as well arkansas has the record of being the most pro-life state in the nation i signed 30 pro-life pieces of legislation while i was governor and 
every state can determine a different outcome here. And it is the most important issue for women and for the unborn child and for our country that we get this right. It's going to be a continued debate. Let's talk about it in terms of compassion, in terms of protecting the life, and also understanding how we have to enhance uh, abortion, uh, excuse me, adoption services, how we have to enhance paternal care. Those right. things we've done in Arkansas and are important for our nation's future. There are a lot of issues that are very important. Uh, I'll, Senator, oh. I'll let you, Thank you. weigh in. Huh? We cannot let states like California, New York, and Illinois have abortions on demand up until the day of birth. That is immoral, it is unethical, it is wrong. We must have a president of the United States who will advocate and fight for at the minimum a 15 week limit. I am 100% pro-life conservative. I have a 100% pro-life record. I gotta tell you though, we must fight for life. Our declaration of independence says our creator gave us inalienable rights that include life. That is a list, that is an issue we must solve. We can't leave it to Illinois. We can't leave it to Minnesota. We can't leave it to Illinois. We must solve that issue with a 15 week Senator. limit at a minimum. Thank you, Senator. I think we're all pro-life, but Thank what you. I would love is for someone to ask Biden and Kamala Harris, are they for 38 weeks? Are they for 39 weeks? Are they for 40 weeks? Because that's what the media needs to be asking. All right, another issue is America and the crime crisis, the homelessness crisis. American cities are in decline. People are moving out as homelessness, drugs, crime move in. Uh, there are problems accelerated. They did accelerate during the pandemic and are still rising, actually. Murders in Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, all up 30 percent between 2019 and 2022. Homelessness is up 11 percent, the largest jump in recorded history. Vice President Pence, a lot of this began in the COVID era. How much of what we're seeing happening around this country is a result of those COVID lockdowns? And is your administration in part to blame for how we got here? Well, I think what's in part to blame is the Democrats been talking about defunding the police for the last five years. And we ought to be funding law enforcement, particularly in our major cities, at, at unprecedented levels. I mean, it's extraordinary to think about the violence that's claiming innocent lives literally every week in every major city in this country. And yet Democrats and liberal prosecutors in major metropolitan areas continue to, to work out their fanciful agendas, to, to do a, a bail reform and, and go easy. What we need is, is strong commitment to law enforcement. We need leadership in Washington, D.C. that will marshal the resources of the states, marshal the resources of the American people. But let me also say it's about opportunity. I mean, a lot of people don't know that uh, those Trump-Pence tax cuts that we got signed into law go away at the end of 2025 if we don't have a Republican president uh, and a Republican House and a Republican Senate. When I'm president of the United States, we're actually going to cut taxes further. We're going to extend those tax cuts, and we're going to close the Federal Department of Education, block grant all that funding back to the states yeah. with a growing economy and educational choice and, and law enforcement. We will bring our cities back. Governor Christie, um, another okay. issue. This weekend here in Milwaukee, reports say there were 30 shootings, and a number of them including kids. Uh, add that to the big increase in school shootings around the country. Democrats blame this crisis on easy access to guns. They also blame Republicans for blocking gun control legislation. What would President Christie do? You know, I'm proud of the fact, Brett, that I'm the only person along with Governor Hutchinson up on this stage who's actually running United States Attorney's Office. I ran the fifth largest office in America in a, in a state where there is significant urban crime. and. The problem is not going to be solved by more money. The problem is, is, is that these prosecutors in these localities in the states are refusing to do their job and to arrest violent criminals. So what a President Christie would do is appoint an attorney general who would instruct each of the 93 U.S. attorneys that they are to take over 
the prosecution of violent crime in every one of those cities that are failing to do so. We have plenty of room in the federal prisons to lock up these violent criminals what? and clean up what's going on all across this country in these individual cities. Secondly, what we need to know, make sure that each and every one of these criminals understand is that the laws apply to everybody. And when Hunter Biden fills out a fake application, a false application for a, for a gun permit, mm -hmm. and then is facing a 10-year mandatory minimum, which was mandated by legislation sponsored by his father, and then you have a Justice Department that walks away from those charges, we're telling people that the law doesn't apply to everybody. In a Christie administration, he would go to jail for 10 years. What about a President Ramaswamy? What does a President Ramaswamy do about guns? So the reality is we have a crime wave in this country and we know how to fix it. The question is, do we actually have the spine to do it? More cops in the streets who are on the streets able to do their jobs without looking over their shoulder for getting sued. And we also have a mental health epidemic in this country. Just over the same period that we have closed mental health institutions, we have seen a spike in violent crime. Do we have the spine to bring them back? I we should as president, I will. But it's not just drugging up people in those psychiatric institutions with Zoloft and Seroquel. It's a deeper issue. I think faith-based approaches can play a role here too. We're in the middle of a national identity crisis. And I say this as a member of my generation, the problem in our country right now, the reason we have that mental health epidemic is that people are so hungry for purpose and meaning at a time when family, faith, patriotism, hard work have all disappeared. What we really need is a tonal reset from the top, saying that this is what it means to be an American. Yes, we will stand for the rule of law. Yes, we will close the southern border where criminals are coming in every day. And yes, we will back law enforcement because we remember who we really are. And that's also how we address that mental health epidemic in the next generation that is directly leading to violent crime. Can I across speak on Governor the DeSantis really here. quickly? Governor DeSantis. We don't have an identity crisis with that. We're not looking for a new national identity. The American people are the most faith-filled, freedom-loving, idealistic, hard-working people the world has ever known. We just need government as good as our people. Well, Mike, I think the difference is you might have, as some others like you may have on this stage, it's Morning in America speech. It is not Morning in America. We live in a dark moment, and we have to confront the fact that we're in an internal sort of cold cultural civil you war. Are and we have to recognize the American that people with the failed win. government in Washington, D.C. We just need government as good as our people again. So I can, so let me just finish addressing that slogan because I don't here. know what that slogan Brett, means. Mark, we need to shut down the administrative DeSantis. state. Crime, Mark, that's actually how we translate it. Crime has been Mark, on the rise in Florida, Governor DeSantis. How do you stop? Crime. Well, actually, crime's at a 50-year low not in Florida. In, we're, in we're, we're happy with that. Well, the statewide, it's a 50-year low. And so here's the thing. These hollowed-out cities, this is a symptom of America's decline. And one of the biggest reasons is because you have George Soros funding these radical <laughs> left-wing district attorneys. They get into office and they right. say they're not going to prosecute crimes yeah. they disagree with. The inmates start running the asylum. There's one guy in this entire country that's ever done anything about that, me. When we had two of these district attorneys in Florida elected with Soros funding who said they wouldn't do their job, I removed them from their post. They are gone. And as president, as president, we are going to go after all of these people because they are hurting the quality of life and they are victimizing innocent people in every corner of this country. And it will stop when I get into office. Okay. One more here before the break, Governor Bergen. Well, Brett and Martha, I just thought it was interesting. You asked your question about the problems we're having in big cities. Nobody ever asked the question of what about the crime wave in small towns? Because in a small town, neighbors help neighbors. People understand each other. If a farmer gets sick, everybody comes together and helps him get the crop off. There's accountability, there's transparency. One thing that I think this country could use is somebody in the White House that understands small town values because that's our road back to get this country on track again. Governor Hutchinson. As former head of the DEA, I understand the drug crisis in America. And right now, whenever you look at the challenges that are in our inner, inner city, uh, there's the three hours? simple words that would be helpful. One, enforce the law when it comes to crime. Secondly, let's deal with the challenge of fentanyl. And it's both about 
Chihuahuas. Okay. Stopping the fentanyl coming from Mexico, but it's also about education of our young people, making sure that we have uh, the tools that are needed for addiction counseling. That's what we expanded in Arkansas as well. Whenever you look at the underlying challenge of America, though, no one likes to see an America with smash and grab in our inner cities. As president of the United States, that will stop. It starts at the top with the respect for our justice system that a former president who's under indictment has undermined by attacking judges, by attacking prosecutors, by attacking the system and saying he's aggrieved. And so we have to have respect for our justice system and the rule of law, and it starts at the top with the president of the United States. Brett, thank Brett, you. Hold on. Take a break. Brett. Um, so, speaking of that, right now you are looking live at Fulton County Jail, where former President Donald Trump will be processed tomorrow. Jesus. So next, the candidates will have an opportunity to talk about the coming trials of Donald Trump. Oh, boy. Okay, a few things. Um, I feel like it's important here to attack other candidates and not Democrats. Like, you're standing on a stage with eight Republicans in front of an audience of conservatives. Nobody here likes Democrats. I don't know how many points you get by attacking Democrats. I feel like it's kind of silly. I feel like you should be trying to stand apart. That's why I like Vivek's strategy. I think it's better where Vivek is really trying to set himself apart from the other candidates. So is Haley a little bit. Thank you, Haley. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe DeSantis is scoring points with the Soros talking points. Um... <clears throat> What am I hearing? I feel like I'm hearing wacky shit outside. Um, I also think, and I feel very strongly about this, especially because now I've got a lot or a decent amount of live experience chatting in front of an audience. I think audiences should be banned for this. Um, I think that it's really bad. Um, audiences can dramatically impact how things are felt and perceived by audiences at home like somebody could tell a joke on stage and you might think it's cringe but you don't actually have a thought about it you're, you're actually way more malleable to what you're hearing than what you realize because if an audience was laughing along you would laugh along you would think the joke is funny and i think there can be a great perception at home for how good or bad a candidate is doing based upon how much support they're getting from the audience so like DeSantis is obviously one of the most known people on this stage um arguably the most known, maybe over Pence, I'm not sure. Um, DeSantis has a lot of name recognition. I wonder how much he's helped in the debates by that because the audience will cheer for him when he gives talking points versus, you know, some of the other candidates on stage, but. Audiences should be banned, but they're never going away. Candidates would balk. The audience is watching campaign folks and party folks. Most people pick Sure, I'm, I, don't, I don't think it's going away, but, you know. It is interesting, though. Remember what I said? Remember what I said last year, last election cycle, that Democrats need to chill on guns because I feel like it's the most divisive, easiest to drop issue. And I feel like conservatives need to chill on abortion because it's like the most divisive, easiest to drop issue. I feel like those are two issues that both sides could change a lot on. It is very funny to see that on this stage tonight, Republicans, a lot of the people on there in surprising ways have moderated their position on abortion really significantly. It was really insane to listen to Mike Pence give that huge speech about knowing you in the womb and quoting that whole Bible verse and then be like, we need to ban an abortion after 15 weeks. <laughs> that was a wild, that was a wild thing to say. I thought he was going to be from birth. Um, now you've got DeSantis who seems to want to ban an abortion. I think one other person was, but yeah, interesting. Vivek's, I will say this, Vivek's like um, responses to other people, like his wittiness is actually not that good. He hasn't had any good like clapbacks. Um, I don't know if it's just age, nerves, or what. Even though he's got like the charisma, he's got like a good speaking voice, and he's got his like slogans, and he's very young populist type energy. His clapbacks have been really bad so far. He hasn't said much that's like been like very witty. I think. Gold from Birch Gold. Like I can I can't remember any of his. What was the thing that he said before? I'm a slow reader, or I I don't even know. Like, yeah.
for a free info kit. Oh, reading comprehension? Lack reading comprehension? Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> was that not him who said it? Was that Tim Scott? People think Tim I thought Vivek had a comment like that. It was when he was going back and forth with um, Pence, I think. I think for these other candidates, they need to do more to stand apart. Like, if you don't have name recognition, you need to be doing something to be to make people remember you. So like Tim Scott, um, Aza Hutchinson, Doug Bergen, Bergham. I think these guys need to do more to stand up. I mean, Tim Scott, I guess, has a bit more recognition outside here. But like, I feel like these guys need to do more. But even his performance, they need to do more, I think. You all on China, Ukraine, immigration, education. But we are going to take a brief moment and talk about the elephant not in the room. President Trump has been indicted in four different states on 91 counts. He will be processed tomorrow in Georgia at the Fulton County Jail for charges relating to the 2020 election loss. You all signed a pledge to support the eventual Republican nominee. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law, would you still support him as your party's choice? Please raise your hand if you would. Oh my God, wait, why are they so slow? Wait, did just, I miss that? Hold on. So why were these clear, three over here so Governor slow? Christie, you were kind of late to the game there, but you oh my no, God. <laughs> look, I'm doing this. And I know this. you didn't. Whoa, whoa, no, come, watch and the look, what, 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 look, here. DeSantis, See, here's the Pence, line. Christie, do it on the left. Got to stop normalizing this conduct. Okay, now, and now whether or not, whether or not you believe that the criminal charges are right or wrong, the conduct is beneath the office of President of the United States. That's a big clap for an anti-Trump talking point. And, and you know, this is the great thing about this country. Booing is allowed, but it doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the truth. Mr. Ramaswamy, you raised your hand supporting... Jeez. No, I'd like to Jay. get in and respond. Let's just speak the truth, okay? President Trump, I believe, was the best president of the 21st century. It's a fact. And Chris Christie, <laughs> honest to God, your claim that Donald Trump is motivated by vengeance and grievance... Careful. ...would be a lot more credible if your entire campaign were not based on vengeance and grievance against one man. Uh oh. Chris Christie's powering up. Chris Christie's powering up. People blindly bashing Donald Trump without an iota of vision for this country. They could just change the channel to MSNBC right now. But I'm not running for president of MSNBC. I am running for president of the United States. We're skating on thin ice and we cannot set a precedent where the party in power uses police force to indict its political opponents. It is wrong. We have to end the weaponization of justice in this country. 30 seconds, Governor DeSantis. No, 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 I'm sorry. 30 seconds, Governor DeSantis. You make me laugh because go, you, go, sit, go, go, go. You, sit, you sit here in an what did answer. What did he say? You sit here in an answer. Right you sit here in an answer. Go ahead, Governor Hold on. Christie. Hold on, Governor Christie. Hold on. Well, so listen, the more time we spend doing this, the less time they can talk about issues you want to talk about. So let's just get through this section. Governor Christie. You, you sit here talking about how you want to stand up for the rule of law yes. uh -oh. and law and order. And the fact is that it can't be selective. In your book, you had much different things to say about Donald Trump than you're saying here tonight. That's and, not true. Oh, it is very true. That's not true. It's very true. I read it, because and I know. Look, bad I know. Behavior and illegal behavior. By the behavior, way, Chris, and you as a prosecutor way, should know yeah, better. Yeah, I, you know what? I know a lot There's better. There's a difference between I bad know, behavior. He's letting him over talk him. I know him. a lot better than you do. You've never done it like you've never done anything to try to advance the interests of this government except to put yourself forward as a candidate tonight. And here's the thing: we stood up for law and order. I did it as. U.S. Attorney, I did it as governor, and I am not going to bow 
to anyone when we have a president of the United States who disrespects the Constitution. He said, he but said, he said, he said, Martha, we have to call out the Martha, it's important to say that the president said, Donald Trump said, it's okay to suspend the Constitution. Now, the oath you take is to preserve, protect, and defend, not suspend. I will always stand up for our Constitution, regardless of the political pressure. Right, we have another question for you. We're going to get everyone in on this issue. Surprised me that didn't push for a response. Hold on, you will. All right, so President Trump's former vice president is on this stage tonight. He has faced hecklers on the campaign trail over his actions on January the 6th. On that day, the vice president moved forward with the certification of the election. So do you believe <laughs> One that clap. Mike Pence did the right thing, Senator Scott? Do you believe he did the right thing? Absolutely, he did the right thing, number one. <laughs> number two, Thank you, we should be we should be asking ourselves a bigger question about the weaponization of the Department of Justice. When I'm president, the first thing I'll do is fire Merrick Garland. Second thing I'll do, what? fire Christopher Ray, because we need Lady Justice to wear a blindfold. Without Isn't that, Ray Trump's no one Was has it? confidence in our justice system. Seventeen percent of Republicans have confidence in our Department of Justice. Here's why. We keep seeing not only the weaponization of the Department of Justice against political opponents, but also against parents who show up at school board meetings. Oh, this meme. This is a lie, but I know what he's talking about. Republicans love that one. What are we doing here, guys? They're called under this DOJ. They're called domestic terrorists. Firing Christopher but, but, but that's not, okay. but that's not shut down the FBI. Mr. Actually, have the courage to get it right. Mr. Ramos, Mr. Ramos. Oh. Oh. Let me finish my comments. Yes. Not only that, in addition to that, we see the SWAT team show up at pro-life activist homes with guns drawn because this DOJ uses their power, uses their authority, not just against political opponents, but against conservatives and conservative causes. It is time for a change in America. And I will bring that change to the greatest nation on God's Martha, green earth. Martha, we, we have an important but question. But Governor DeSantis, still do you believe that Mike Pence did the right thing on January 6th? So here's what we need to do. We need to end the weaponization <laughs> of these federal agents. Right. But but I will do that. That's not the question. Here, I, I know, but here's the thing. I know, but let me this just... This election <laughs> is not about January 6th of 2021. It's about January 20th of 2025, when the next president is going to take nice. office. Slogan. I know what the Democrats would like to do. They want to talk about all these other issues, but we've got to focus on your future. We've got to focus on reversing the decline of our country. Right. Right. I learned in the military, I was assigned uh, with U.S. Navy SEALs in Iraq, that you focus on the mission above all else. You can't Wait, get was he a Navy SEAL? So or worked with the Navy SEALs? Forward, and we've got to make Wait, sure what is that? that Wait, we're what? bringing the message that can win right. in Vice November 2020. Do not answer the question. Do not answer the question. Vice President Pence, the mission of the Legal advisor to SEAL Team 1. Okay. It's important to defend the Constitution of the United States. I think Legal advisor. people deserve to know whether everyone on this stage agrees that I kept my oath to the Constitution that day. Ooh. There's no we've more important duty. So, so answer the question. Right. Thing. I've, I've answered this before. So yes. Now, why are we, he, Mike, Mike did his duty. I got no beef with him, but here's the thing. <laughs> Is this what we're gonna be focusing on? I'm relieved. Going we forward, will. the yeah. rehashing of this, I'll yes. tell you, Governor the DeSantis, Democrats would love that. We and they will win well, if we Governor let him get away with it. Let me just say, Governor DeSantis, we spent an hour talking about policy. Former President Trump is beating you by 30, 40 points in many polls. So it is a factor in the GOP primary. Governor right. Hutchinson, you did, did not raise your hand. I did not raise my hand because there's an important issue we as a party have to face. 
And over a year ago, I said that Donald Trump was morally disqualified from being president again as a result of what happened on January 6th. Ooh. More people are understanding the importance of that, including conservative legal scholars who says he may be disqualified under the 14th Amendment from being president again as a result of the insurrection. This is something that could disqualify him under our rules and under the Constitution. And so, obviously, I'm not going to support somebody who's been convicted of a serious felony or who has dis is disqualified under our Constitution, and that's consistent with RNC rules, and I hope everybody would right. agree with me. Right. Right. Yeah, we're going to move on. No, we're going to... Martha, can I answer the question? Can I get in on that? Okay, them? I'd like to answer... You, no, I've already been in on it, Vice on. President Pence. All right, I'd like to answer the question Go you ahead. asked and not give a pre-canned speech. Mike Pence stood for the Constitution, and he deserves not grudging credit, he deserves our thanks as Americans for putting his oath of office and the Constitution of the United States before personal, political, and unfair pressure. And the argument that we need to have in this party before we can move on to the issues that Ron talked about is we have to dispense with the person who said that we need to suspend the Constitution to put forward his political career. Mike Pence said no, and he deserves credit for it. Okay. Uh, Governor Haley, we haven't heard from you on this. Do you agree? Do you agree that Vice President Pence did, this, did the right thing that day or not? I do think that Vice President Pence did the right thing, and I do think that we need to give him credit for that. But what I will also tell you is, look, I mean, when it comes to whether President Trump should serve or not, I trust the American people. Let them here, vote. Here. Let them decide. Here, but here. what they will tell you is that it is time for a new generational conservative leader. We have to look at the fact that three quarters of Americans don't want a rematch between Trump and Biden. And we have to face the fact that Trump is the most disliked politician in America. We can't win a general election that way. Governor Bergen? Governor Bergen? It's Governor Bergen, opportunity. Happy to answer the question. Mike Pence did the right thing on January 6th. But I would say you started off the top of this hour saying we're going to talk about China, Ukraine, education. We are. China is the number yeah. one threat to our country. <laughs> and every minute that these eight candidates spend talking about the past instead of about the future is time that is just the, the you know who loves it? Biden loves it. But China loves it when we're talking about the past. Okay. As promised, we were going to spend a few questions on it, let people say what they wanted to say. And now, indeed, we are moving on to the subject. The U.S. Ukraine. has committed nearly 77. Can I speak on this issue? I was. You kind of did an, you, you answered on this. <laughs> issue. You, you did. You did say answer. something. Yeah. yeah. I thought we thought you were done, but uh, you no, please. I wasn't done. Well, Mike, why don't you say this? Join me yeah. in making a commitment well that on day one you would pardon Donald Trump. I'm the only candidate on the stage. Oh. The that is how we move our nation forward I don't know and turn the page forward. That's exactly Trump right. Will be convicted of these crimes. You should make be able to make a commitment. Wait, what? The same oh. justice system that was. I'll make sure Trump will be. Difference between you and, and me. Yeah, I'm not a professional actually, politician. That did he say that? Can answer yeah, a question. I've actually given pardons. When I was governor of the state of Indiana, it usually follows a finding of guilt and contrition by the individual that's been convicted. So, we'll look, we'll, if I'm president in the United States, we'll give know, fair oh. consideration any pardon request. But if I may, <laughs> if I may, you know, it's not about looking back at, at January 2021. It's about January 20th, 2017. Jesus. I put my left hand on Ronald Reagan's Bible. How many years are we going for? It's actually about... And I took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And it ended with a prayer, so help me God. It was a promise that I made to the American people, but I also made it, it made it to my Heavenly Father. Every day for four years, I sought to keep that oath. And everyone on this stage needs to make it clear whether or not they'll do the same if they earn this job and the confidence of the American people. Now look, I've made it clear. I, I had hoped that the issues surrounding the 2020 election and the controversies around January 6th had not come to this, had not come to criminal proceedings. I would rather they had been resolved by the American people and the American people alone. But no one's above the law, 
And President Trump is entitled to the presumption of innocence that every American is entitled to, and we will make sure and extend that to him. But the American people deserve to know that the president asked me in his request that I reject or return votes unilaterally, power that no vice president in American history had ever exercised or taken, he asked me to put him over the Constitution. And uh, I chose the Constitution, and I always will. I had no Vice right president to overturn Pence. the election, and Kamala Harris will have no right to overturn the election <laughs> when we beat them in 2024. <laughs> Thank you, Vice President okay. Pence. Now we are moving on to other <laughs> His issues. His mic drop moment. Hey. The U.S. has committed nearly $77 billion in aid to the Ukraine war. The administration is now asking Congress for $24 billion more. Wrong audience. Regardless of that, the specific specifics of that plan, is there anyone on stage who would not support the increase of more funding to Ukraine? We would, would not Europe, support it. Europe needs to step up. I mean, I, I would have Europe step up and do their job. Right, Mr. Ramaswamy. Nice. Vivek gets this solo timing. Europe, but you're saying you would not, too, Governor DeSantis? I will have Europe to pull their weight. Europe already contributes more aid than the United States. And I think our support should be contingent on them doing it. It already is. And I would have support Dumbass. in China uh, to, be able to, take, uh, to be able to take China um, and do what we need to do with China. Mr. Ramaswamy, you would not support an increase of funding to Ukraine? I would not. And I think that this is disastrous. That we are protecting is he going to bring up Hawaii? An invasion across somebody else's border when we should use those same military resources to prevent across the invasion of our oh, southern, southern border, border here in the United Mexico. States of America. We are driving Russia further into China's hands. The Russia-China alliance is the single greatest threat we face. And I find it offensive that we have professional politicians on the stage that will make a pilgrimage to Kiev, to their won't go to Hawaii Zelensky, or the border, which one? the same thing for people in Maui, yeah. or the south side of Chicago, okay. right, or right. Kensington. Okay. I think on. that we have to put I'm the in. interests of Americans Let first, he was secure our own border instead of somebody else's. He was referring and the reality is, this is also how we project okay. strength and by making America strong at home. Thank you. All right. We heard, heard, heard the names. Let's Governor Christie first. All right, look. I did go to Ukraine, and I went to Ukraine because I wanted to see for myself what Vladimir Putin's army was doing to the free Ukrainian people. And let me tell you, I want you all to look around this arena tonight and imagine that every one of these seats was filled. And if every one of them was filled, there would still be 2,500 more children outside to make over 20,000 who have been abducted, right. stolen, ripped from their mothers and fathers, right. and brought back to Russia to be programmed to fight their own families. Damn, really 20, they have 000? gouged out people's eyes, cut off their ears, and shot people in the back of the head, men, and then gone into those homes and raped the, so the daughters and the wives who were left as widows and orphans. This is... This is the Vladimir Please. Putin. This is the Vladimir Putin who Donald Trump called brilliant and a genius. If we don't stand up against this type of autocratic killing we in the world, to we will be next. You were mentioned, I have a question you were for mentioned, Governor Haley. We'll come back. Vice President right. Pence was mentioned. You get 30 seconds. Yeah, well, let me, let me be clear. Anybody that thinks that we can't solve the problems here in the United States and be the leader of the free world has a pretty small view of the greatest nation on earth. That is Damn. Incredible. We can do Damn. both, Rebecca. We've done both. We've been the leader of the free world and the arsenal of democracy for years. The Reagan doctrine years ago made it clear. We said, if you're willing to fight the communists on your soil, we'll give you the means to fight them there so our troops don't have to fight them. Vivek, if we do the giveaway that you want to give to Putin to give him his land, it's not going to be too long before he rolls across a NATO border, and frankly, our men and women of our armed forces are going to have to go and fight him. I want to let the Ukrainians fight and drive Putin an and the flash. Russians back out new, into I, Russia. I, I want to just so briefly address Pence, have to make that Vice fight. President Pence. I have a news flash. The USSR does not exist anymore. It fell back in 1990. Did I say the real threat. You talked about the communists. And the real communists that we have to address right now is the idea 
idea what I, Vladimir you, Putin's aims you, are. You already spoke. Now I actually have something Vladimir to say. Vladimir Putin seconds. has been saying he wants to reestablish the old you, Soviet sphere of influence. You've made your influence. point, Vice President. Vice President, Vice President Pence. Pence. I'm sorry if I insulted him by calling him a communist. He is a dictator and a murderer. And the United States of America needs to stand against authoritarianism. Right. Mr. Ramaswamy, 30 Please seconds. Respond. The real threat we face today is communist China. And we are driving Russia further into China's arms. The Russia-China military alliance is the single greatest right. threat we face. Okay. Nobody in either political party is talking about it. And I am, the, I am the only non-neocon on this stage. Is to but keep us out of war. Mr. Vice President, we can't China hear... Mr. Vice Russia President, is to give Russia Mr. everything Vice President. they've got, Mr. Vice President, give them a promise that Ukraine will never be in NATO, and then somehow Mr. Vice President. China will not think about taking Taiwan. We achieve peace through strength. Mr. Vice America President, America needs to stand for freedom. Okay, here we go. I think we need well, to establish some what, ground rules when here, When we folks. hear this oh, bell, well, yes. <laughs> that, that means your time's done. You're done. <laughs> so, Mr. Vice President, we appreciate your aggressiveness here. 30 seconds is 30 seconds. Mr. Ramaswamy, you were mentioned. You get 30 seconds. So, the reality is that today, today, Ukraine... Wait, why did they boo? Because he's getting 30 seconds? The United States of America. And I think that the same people who took us into the Iraq War... What did I miss? The same people who took us into the Vietnam War. You cannot end it. You cannot start oh, yeah. another no-win war. And I do not want to get to the point where we're sending our military resources abroad when we could be better using them here at home to protect our own borders, okay. protect the homeland. All right. That will be my top priority in foreign I, policy. I think we gave you more than, this than the 30 homeland. seconds in the rebound. So I do want to get to some other people because everybody... Uh, we, we respect everybody's time here. So, Governor Haley, um, you... Did not raise your hand, meaning that you would support more funding for the Ukraine war. You have uh, said of Governor DeSantis that um, you didn't appreciate it when he initially called it a territorial dispute. Why? First of all, the American president needs to have moral clarity. They need to know the difference between right and wrong. They need to know the difference between good and evil. Right. When you look at the situation with Russia and Ukraine, here you have a pro-American country that was invaded by a thug. So when you want to talk about what has been given to Ukraine, less than three and a half percent of our defense budget has been given to Ukraine. If you look at the percentages per GDP, 11 of the European countries have given more than the U.S. But what's really important is go back to when China and Russia held hands, shook hands before the Olympics and named themselves unlimited partners. A win for Russia is a win for China. We have to know that. Ukraine is the first line of defense for us. And the problem that Vivek doesn't understand is he wants to hand Ukraine to Russia. He wants to let China to eat Taiwan. He wants to go and stop funding Israel. You don't False. do that to friends. What you do False. instead is you have the backs of your friends. Ukraine is the front line of defense. Putin has said, if Russia, once Russia takes Ukraine, Poland and uh, the Baltics are next. My neocon That's talking points. War. We're trying Compared to, to Trump, it feels good to Look hear him again. Look what Putin did today. He <laughs> oh, killed man. Pergozin. When I was at the UN, the Russian ambassador suddenly died. This guy is a murderer, and you are choosing a murderer over, over a pro American country. First of all, first of all, first of all, Mr. you have 30 seconds, Mr. Descent. You know, Governor Nikki, DeSantis, I wish you well in your future career on the boards of Lockheed and Raytheon. You know, I'm not on but the, the, the fact of the matter, and you know, Boeing you came off of it, but you've been pushing this lie. Stage, you've been pushing this lie all you week, Nikki. You want Nikki. to go and defund Israel? This, you want to okay, give let me address that. China? I'm glad you brought you that up. Go give I'm going to address Russia? each of those right now. This is the false of a professional politician. There you have it. So you the reality make America is, America less than you have no me, foreign policy experience, and it shows. And you know what? The, it the shows. Oh, oh Jesus! Okay, he's taking hits. The Vivek steamship so taking in water. Will never be stronger than by the end of my first term. But it's not a client relationship; it is a friendship. And you know what friends do? Friends help each other stand on their own two feet. So I will lead Abraham Accords 2.0. I will partner with Israel to make sure Iran never is nuclear armed. But you know what I love about Israel? And I've been there probably in the last 10 years more than most people on this stage. You know what I love about them? I love their border policies. I love their tough on crime policies. I love that they <laughs> have the a national fuck? identity and an iron dome to protect their homeland. 
And so, yes, I want to learn from the friends that we're supporting. And what puzzles no, me cut the, is, uh, no, I want to learn from those and apply you, those to protect it's our not homeland, that Nikki. Israel that needs is the answer. America. America needs on? Israel. Okay, they Governor DeSantis, Governor DeSantis, you were mentioned yeah. in the territorial dispute. Not only... Uh, no, it's not a so territorial as, as dispute either. President of the United States, your first obligation Jesus. is to defend our country and its people. And that means... That. You're sending all this money, but you're not doing what we need to do to secure our own border. We have tens of thousands of people we can who are being killed because what well, we're not handling both. And, and so I am going to declare time. it a national emergency. I'm, I'm not going to send troops to Ukraine, but I am going to send them to our southern border. When these drug pushers are bringing fentanyl across the border, that's going to be the last thing they do. We're going to use force and we're going to leave them stone cold okay. dead. We're, we're actually going to move on to China. We're going to talk about China. Okay. The Governor Burgum. China has the biggest navy in the world, the biggest army in the world. Now they have warships, warships off the coast of Alaska. They are threatening Taiwan. In coming years, China will have 1,500 nuclear warheads, it's believed. The U.S. just arrested two sailors accused of spying for China within our military. So the question is, how would you deter China as a president, Bergen? Well. This is the number one issue we're facing, and of course we haven't been talking about it, and we act like that letting Russia win in the Ukraine uh, is like a gimme as opposed to a gift to China. Russia has become China's gas station, but how would we do it? Uh, the Biden administration is a complete fail. China imports 10 million barrels of oil a day more than any other country in the world. They do not even have all the food they need to feed everybody in that country. So they don't have energy security or food security. But the Biden administration says Blinken, China? Yellen, uh, over there, uh, they, they're, they're over there trying, they don't even bring up energy because they're too busy trying to kill the U.S. energy here. And what we need to do is not meetings, not press releases, uh, because something that would send a lot more than a Damn. press release is actually harpoon missiles. We need anti-ship missiles on Taiwan. The way that you have a war never start, which is the goal, the way you have peace through strength, is that you actually have strength, you actually have deterrence. And what we have in, in, in what we've got going on in Ukraine is an example of when deterrence fail. What, we, what is an example there of Biden's disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, the fact that he green-lighted Putin moving into Ukraine, and then now they see weakness, and when they see weakness, they make a move. And we have to be strong, and we have to be strong both in Ukraine, and we can solve the southern border. Absolutely, we can do that, because guess what? There's only 19,855 authorized people for the border patrol but they're not all staff because the biden administration doesn't enforce law enforcement but biden administration wanted to put 87,000 people in the irs as opposed to giving the money in this fort we need to our own border patrol Senator Scott on China. oh that jesus who just joined the debate stage let's, let's oh no i owe that one guy a thousand dollars thousand irs they're here and hire or double the number of Border Patrol agents. I just left Yuma, Arizona about two weeks ago. The most pressing need of the American people from a national security standpoint is our southern border. It has led to the death of 70,000 Americans because of fentanyl, plus six million illegal crossings since President Biden has taken office and 200 people on our national security watch list have been caught at our border. How many have not been caught at our southern border? If we just spend $10 billion, we could finish the wall. For $5 billion more, we could have the military-grade technology to surveil our southern border to stop the flow of fentanyl and save 70,000 Americans a year. That should be the priority of this government. And as the next president of the United States, I will make that border wall complete. Thank there you. are many I more could, questions on China. Say, I do want to ask I want to say, about... I want to say I couldn't okay. agree more. It's not just the 70,000 from fentanyl. We've lost 200,000 people to overdoses since Biden took office. That's 300 people a day. We're taking mass casualties, and those aren't, that's a statistic, but these are sons and daughters, nieces and nephews that we're losing. We've got North Dakota troops down there flying night helicopter missions from San Diego to the Gulf Coast, trying to stop these transnational criminal organizations. They've got better funding on their side than we've got on our side. Speaking of which, Governor Hutchinson, speaking of which, images from earlier this month, Governor Hutchinson, 
Hutchinson, with Mexico, and Vice President Pence, yeah, I'm images right, from I'm earlier good. this month. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Vice President Pence, United it States. really doesn't help. I'm asking a question. <laughs> earlier this month, <laughs> oh, it's images sold it like a showed child. suspected cartel members crossing into Texas with rifles. Do you <laughs> consider <laughs> this, like this a Sam Hyde picture. <laughs> an invasion? Would you authorize lethal force along that border? There would be lethal force used by the Border Patrol law enforcement as needed to protect the border. Absolutely. When you look at the military, the military has to be used for intelligence gathering purposes. This is not unusual. Whenever I was in the Bush administration, we went down there and met, met with Br President Vicente Fox of Mexico and asked his help in going after the cartels. And he looked at me and said, they're a problem to us as well. And so we joined together and we took down the Ariana Felix brothers leading the Tijuana cartel. And that made a difference. Ramon was shot and killed and Ben Amin was captured. Cooperation makes a difference. We cannot be successful going against the cartel unless we bring in Mexico as a partner. We have to use economic pressure to accomplish that. President Obrador has not been helpful, and we have to use economic pressure that this administration is not using. The rule of law has to matter on both sides of it. Okay. This is critical. I've done it. We know what needs to be done. The military has to be limited in its use. When after 9-11, we had the global war on terror, and guess what? We protected the border at the same time. You can do both. Okay, uh, let's go to Governor DeSantis. Wow. So, as president, would you support sending U.S. special forces over the border into Mexico to take out fentanyl labs, to take out drug cartel operations? Would you support that kind of American military use? Yes, and I will do it on day one. Here's the thing. The cartels are killing tens of thousands of our fellow citizens. You want to talk about a country in decline? You have the cartels controlling a lot of part of your southern border. We have to reestablish the rule of law and we have to defend our people. The president of the United States has got to use all available powers as commander in chief to protect our country and to protect the people. So when they're coming across, yes, we're going to use lethal force. Yes, we reserve the right to operate. How many more tens of thousands are we going to let to die? I am sick. I've met angel moms throughout this country. I met a lady in, in Texas named Tracy, and yeah. her son took one Percocet that was laced with fentanyl, immediately died. That is happening all across this country because of the poison that they are bringing in. So as president, would I use force? Would I treat them as foreign terrorist organizations? You're darn right I would. You're darn You're right. Pence. You're darn right. Vice President Pence, why would you be better at... Why would you be better? Why would you be better at... Governor DeSantis on the campaign trail refers to your administration as not finishing the wall. Right. Right. Look... We secured the southern border. We secured the southern border. We secured the southern border and reduced illegal immigration and asylum abuse by 90 percent. When Joe Biden took over, he threw open the southern border yes. of the United States, and the wave of humanity, the wave of fentanyl, that's been eloquently described here, is, is a is a wave of human tragedy across this country. But Martha, you began this evening talking about who is best prepared to be the next president of the United States. And I have to tell you, with all humility, I, I was there when we negotiated uh, through the government shutdown and got the funding available to build the wall. I was negotiating on Capitol Hill around the clock. I negotiated the Remain in Mexico policy on behalf of the President of the United States. And AC, you're so right. It's because we used economic pressure to bring the Mexicans to the table, and they allowed us to have people wait in Mexico while they applied for asylum and ended asylum abuse overnight we got the mexicans to deploy their national guard to their southern border and uh, and to our southern border as never before and i want to promise you as president of the united states of america i will engage mexico the exact same way and we will partner 
with the Mexican military, and we will hunt down and destroy the cartels that are claiming lives in the United States of America. Okay, thank you. A another issue that is related to this yeah. is that almost 7 million migrants have crossed this border, our southern border, during the Biden administration. So, Governor Christie, what would you do about the 7 million who are here? How would you handle them? What would you do? Amnesty? Martha, the first thing we need to do is to stop any more from coming. Uh-oh. That's the first thing we need to do. Then the next thing we need to do Path with the citizenship. folks that are here is to, again, as we've talked about all night tonight, we have to have law and order in this country. We have to enforce the law. And what that means is to make sure that people who come here illegally are not rewarded for being here illegally. Oh, man. We have so many is he really gonna say people deport from them around all? the world who are waiting in line, following the law, to try to come here and pursue the American dream. And those people are waiting and waiting and waiting because we haven't dealt with the problem of the folks who are here. We have to have them detained. We have to make sure that they are not rewarded for having broken the law. And one last thing on this fentanyl issue. With China, we can't take Damn. our eye off of that ball. Right. Yes, it's important that we secure the border. Very important, as I just said. But China is sending these chemicals to these drug cartels for them to create the fentanyl that is killing hundreds of thousands of our citizens. The Chinese are engaging in an act of war against us, killing our citizens. We better make that priority one in our conversations with China and to try to straighten that relationship out because if we don't, we're gonna lose more and more of our I, citizens. I just wanna clarify, would you send those people back? Of course. Oh, damn. You That's probably to. a good answer for conservatives, though. I don't think we conservatives have a lot are pro-amnesty. So. Americans care about. Next up, we're going to talk about the crisis in education, as millions of American children are not proficient in reading or Let me math. Some water. After this. Do you trust our government and where the economy is heading? Does the thought of losing your hard-earned retirement savings to DC's reckless spending scare the heck out of you? Well, you're not alone. Smart Americans are taking action while they still can by reaching out to Birch Gold Group. For over 20 years, Birch Gold has helped concerned Americans protect their futures by moving part of- 30 more minutes. I don't know, it's pretty boring. There's too many people on stage. We need to kick out some of these boring guys. It's time to vote to keep, not kick. <laughs> yeah, they have, they've stayed away from all the culture war shit, though, surprisingly. Nothing about groomers or trans people or... I will say, though, I am happy there's a new lightning rod candidate, Vivek, because now I can instantaneously ascertain, like, how fucking stupid somebody is, because I can already tell Vivek is going to be, like, the new retard candidate that all the dumb fucks, all of your dumbest fucking friends are probably tweeting right now about how absolutely fucking epic that Vivek guy is. He is going, he is the new lightning rod dipshit candidate to where, like, oh, my friend really likes this guy. I probably don't have to listen to anything he says about science, government, foreign policy, anything. Like, just, oh, God. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> well. Pacman saying that Pence is the overperformer of the night. Is he? Uh. Pence, the thing is, Pence is already coming in on a pretty high note. He's got a lot of recognition and everything. Um, 
I don't think Pence has had any bad moments. I just, I feel like, I don't know if he's had anything, like, stand out. DeSantis has, like, an audience that's, like, cheering him on a lot. I think Vivek has made a name for himself. I think Vivek is, like, I don't know how many people have followed him before, but I feel like Vivek has made a name for himself. Haley, I think Haley already had a reputation for being anti-Trump prior to this. Um, I think. I feel like I heard that, but I haven't followed these people as closely. Um, yeah, Nikki Haley's engagement with um, Vivek was pretty strong. I feel like just based very lightly on like how I've heard of people, I feel like ha Nikki. I feel like Nikki and Vivek have pro Haley and Vivek have probably had. I should use first names or last names for both. Nikki and Vivek have probably had the most to gain, I think. That'd be my guess. But, because Pence is already so popular. I don't know if he's, like, gained a new fans tonight, but who knows. The nation's report card was the weakest ever for American school children, uh, exposing chronic absenteeism. I think Christy has a good performance, but not a contest for. Pre Christy's just here to fuck with other people. And I think. year olds, <laughs> Governor DeSantis, you would eliminate. You said the Department of Education, but as president, would you still have a responsibility to fix this crisis as we see it? Absolutely. The decline in education is one of the major reasons why our country is in decline. We need education in this country, not indoctrination in this country. And in Florida, Florida, we stood up for what was right. First, we had schools open during COVID, and a lot of the problems that we've seen are because these lockdown states lock their kids out of school for a year, year and a half. That was wrong. We stood up. I took a lot of fire for that. I was, uh, I was pilloried by the media, but I stood for our kids. And as president, I'll stand for you and your kids as well. But we have to make sure that what our schools are doing is focusing on solid academics. In Florida, we eliminated critical race theory from our K through 12 schools. We eliminated gender ideology from our K through 12 schools. And we have elevated the importance of American civics in teaching our kids about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. As president, I'm gonna lead an effort to increase civic understanding and knowledge of our constitution. We cannot be graduating students that don't have any foundation in what it means to be an American. Mr. Ramaswamy, Mr. Ramaswamy, Mr. Peck, Mr. Ramaswamy, hold on, Senator Scott. You've said that the Department of Education, the FBI, the ATF, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the IRS, the Department of Commerce, many of these should not exist. That's correct. So to the education question, how would you deal with the crisis? So look, we have a crisis of achievement. Let's shut down the head of the snake, the Department of Education. Take that $80 billion, put it in the hands of parents across this country. This is the civil rights issue of our time. <coughs> Allow any parent to choose where they send their kids to school. End the teachers' unions at the local level to allow public schools to compete. And then revive our national identity where every high school senior should have to pass the same civics test that frankly every immigrant, including my mother, had to pass in order to become a citizen of this country. What? And the fact of the matter is, look, there's a part of education policy that also rests with the family. I didn't grow up in money, but you know the word privilege gets used a lot? Well, you know what? I did have the ultimate privilege of Having two parents two in the parents. house with a focus on educational achievement. And I want every kid to enjoy that. So part of the problem is we also have a federal government that pays single women more not to have a man in the house than to have a man in the house, contributing to an epidemic of fatherlessness. And I think that goes hand in glove with the education crisis as well, because we have to remember education starts with the family and the nuclear family is the greatest form of governance known to mankind. has said governor haley has said that biological boys playing in girls sports is the women's issue of our time you said that even though you signed a ban on this in north dakota that there hadn't been one instance where it was actually needed are you saying that you think that too much is made of this issue 
No, I'm saying in North Dakota, we made a priority of protecting women's sports, and we've done that uh, in our state. Uh, but I would absolutely do that. But I do think when we start talking about education and we think that we're gonna have a federal government one size fits all, we're just completely losing track of the fact that education differs by state. Some, some school districts are doing a fantastic job, some less so. But the idea that every school district state and every teacher is somehow indoctrinating people is just false. You know, when I was building a company from scratch, you know, with small town kids, and we went, you know, grew up in a town of 300, but we built a global company in 132 countries with over 100,000 customers. We listened to those customers. We spent time with them. We talked to them. We did that. And as governor, well, education is one of the biggest part of a state budget. So as a governor, I go, I shadow a student. I don't, uh, the night before I find out the students, the, the student finds out, I'm gonna go to every class with them. I don't sit and lecture school districts how to do it. I go and see the experience. And there's a lot of things that have to change, but what needs to change in education is ev it's innovation. We're doing it the same way we did it 50 years ago with innovation, not regulation. I would get rid of the Department of Education. I would give block grants to schools, but I'd give them on merit based on who's doing the most innovative. I just got done holding oh, the no child left behind. governor's conference on innovation education. You should see what the people are doing when you get you cut loose the red tape, get the burden off their back. They care. Teachers. In this country the vast majority of them care about those kids they're working in low-paying jobs and they're fighting fighting for those kids and their families first I'll, I'll tell you as you know as a parent the one thing you want is for your child to have a better life than you did and we can talk about all of these things and there's a lot of crazy woke things happening in schools but we've got to get these kids reading if a child can't read by third grade they're four times less likely to graduate high school so we need to make sure we bring in reading remediation all over this country we need transparency in the classroom because parents should never have to wonder what's being said or taught to their children in the classroom Parents need to be deciding which schools their kids go to because they know best. And let's put vocational classes back into the high schools. Let's teach our kids to build things again. Hey. When we do that and we allow that innovation, that's when it'll get back. And yes, I will always say I'm going to fight for girls all day long because strong girls become strong women. Strong women become strong, strong leaders. Mothers. And biological oh, boys don't belong in the locker rooms of any of our girls. <laughs> I hit that trans point at the end. Uh, the lightning round, and the first question is going to go uh, to you, Vice President. So this is a lightning round of questions. 30-second answers, please. Uh, President Biden will be 82 years old on Inauguration Day. Nearly 70% of Americans say that he is too old to serve. Should presidents have to pass a mental and physical test in order to serve Vice President Pence? Well, I, it might be a good idea to have everybody in Washington, D.C. pass a mental and physical <laughs> <laughs> uh, 30 seconds, no. The American people can make those judgments. But let me say, I, I'm running for president of the United States because we don't need a president who's too old. And we don't need a president who's too young. young. Vivek. <laughs> we need a president who's been there. We need a president who knows how Congress works, how the White House works, how states work. And on this education issue, Martha, I was fighting against No Child Left Behind when Republicans were doubling the Department of Education. I'll also shut down the Federal Department of Education. And when I was governor, we doubled the size of the largest school choice program in America. And we'll give school choice to every family in America so, when I'm um, in the White House. This is a lightning round, Mr. Ramaswamy. I think you were mentioned there. You're 38. You're the youngest on the stage. You've said, and you just said, you want a civics test or public service for those under 25 to be able to vote. So the question is, do you want a mental acuity test for presidents over 75? I believe in the people of this country to tell the difference between somebody who's an automaton and somebody who's actually a thinking agent in the White House, which we don't have in there today. And I will tell you, I want to address Vice President Pence's comment. I think we do need... I think we do need... I think we need generation to lead this nation forward. Look at the way I've run this campaign. Fuck me. Is it is South Rumble South fucking up or am I? I believe in the people of this country to tell the difference between somebody who's an automaton and somebody who's actually a thinking agent in the White House, which we don't have in there today. And I will tell you, I want to address Vice President Pence's comment. I think we do need... I think we do need... 
I think we can ration to lead this oh. nation forward. Look at the way I've run this campaign. Go into the south side of Chicago to Kensington in the middle of Philadelphia where traditional Republican candidates don't go. We have an opportunity to build a multi ethnic working class That's majority how he talks. to deliver a <laughs> landslide. And I think I'm the only candidate in this race, young or old, black or white, to bring all of those voters along to deliver a Reagan 1980 revolution. Same, We're going to do it in 2024. Same question. In a presidential election until okay. 20. Well, that, I, I will answer that. I will answer seconds, that. 30 seconds. 30 yeah. seconds. 30 seconds quick answer. You guys have to get control of this debate. Everybody's going to get listen, control of this debate. Listen, we're getting control of the debate. This is a lightning <laughs> round, not rolling thunder. <laughs> Governor Hutchinson, you have 30 seconds on the same question. Uh, on education, first of all, look at Arkansas. We have to compete with China. I built computer science education. We led the nation in computer science education, going from 1,100 students to 23,000 students taking it. This is how you compete with China. As President of the United States, I will make sure we go from 51% of our schools offering computer science to every school in rural areas and urban areas offering computer science for the benefit of our kids, and we can compete with China in terms okay. of technology. Thank you, sir. By, by this is gonna okay. go to, this is, this is Don't let this guy in next time. Um, okay. We're trying to do a, a quick round of different topics here. So, w Senator Scott, faith is on decline in this country. You talked about it a little bit before tonight. So is there a role for a president of the United States in changing that? What would you do to change that? Well, our nation was founded upon the Judeo-Christian values that has made this the greatest nation on God's green earth. I'm a big believer in Ephesians 3.20 that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or imagine. Our responsibility should be to model the behavior we want others to follow. On education, the only way we change education in this nation is to break the backs of the teachers' unions. They are standing Jesus. in the doorhouse of our kids locking them into failing schools and locking them out of the greatest future they could have. As President, Governor DeSantis, would you support some mandatory military service for all Americans? I think it should be voluntary. I'm somebody that volunteered to serve, inspired by September 11th, and I deployed to Iraq. Uh, alongside U.S. Navy SEALs in places like Fallujah. <laughs> he likes Ramadi. that Navy SEALs and line. It's, uh, something that I think has taught me, you know, when you go in that, that type of environment, anything you have, your personal agenda, you check it at the door. You go there, and it's about focusing on the mission above all else. And guys come together, and they get it done. And that's how I would view being the president of the United States. It's not about me. It's not about all these other side issues. My sole focus will be on your future and reversing this country's decline. Okay, now for something uh, a little out of this world, and this is for you, Governor Christie. Do you believe that the recent spike in UFO encounters... Oh. <laughs> I get the UFO is, question? Is, yeah, you know, Come on, yeah, yeah. No, but, but, okay, we've been hearing a lot of... We've been hearing a lot of testimony in Congress, and people are taking this a lot more seriously. And we're hearing that, you know, there are things going on that people aren't aware of. So, if you were president, Governor Christie, would you level with the American people about what the government knows about these possible Look, encounters? Martha, and especially coming from a woman from New Jersey, <laughs> I, I think it's horrible that just because I'm from New Jersey, you asked me about unidentified flying objects <laughs> and Martians. <laughs> Um, we're different, but we're not that different. Um, <laughs> look, um, of course, the job of the President of the United States is to level with the American people about everything. Right. The job of the President of the United related, States right? is to stand for truth. The job of the President of the United States is to be a role model for our children and our grandchildren. And so whether it was UFOs or this problem of education, and Tim's right, by the way, and I started this in 2010 by going right after the teachers unions in New Jersey and drove them down to an all-time low popularity rating because they were putting themselves before <laughs> our kids. That is the biggest threat to our country, not UFOs. Okay. Well, coming up, we've got closing arguments. Plus, right after the debate, Hannity is live from the spin room right here in the Pfizer Forum with reaction from all the candidates. Why is it called the spin room? <laughs> Oh. Uh. 
Let's see. I'll rank these from from green to red. I feel like DeSantis, he's not had like the worst perform. I just feel like he's super meh. That's my feeling on DeSantis. He's just like a meh. We'll give him a meh out of 10. Where's my orange meh color? This Vivek guy, Vivek started good, but I feel like he's also kind of med out. He had like a couple moments. Nah, I'll give him a, I'll give him a green. Fuck, this is really ugly. Is there a way to just change the background color of like behind this? Oh, highlight. <laughs> okay. DeSantis, uh, what did I say? He's like a meh. Vivek, I'll give him like a... He's making a name for himself. That's good. That's good. He's definitely like petered out. Is that a phrase? I, the thing is, I feel like Pence has done solidly. He just doesn't have like... He's so popular already. I don't know if he's climbed that much. He hasn't done poorly, though. His exchange with Vivek is probably pretty good. I'll give him, like, a a light green. Is he that popular? I mean, in terms of popular, I mean, like, everybody knows him. Like, everybody knows Pence. When I say popular, you retarded fucking morons. And when I say popular, I don't mean he's like, the, he's, like, winning the fucking polls. I mean name recognition. Everybody knows who fucking Pence is. You incel fucking dipshits in chat. Okay? Jesus. Uh, I think Haley has done well. I think she's made a good. We'll give her the big green. Um, I don't know what Christy does here. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna. I'm, I feel like Christy is literally only here to fuck with other people, so I'll give him the orange. This Tim Scott guy, I, I, I don't know. I just didn't feel any energy from. I didn't feel anything from any of these three guys. I don't know if they had any standout moments at all he's doing so good though chris christie he, he is doing good i think christie's doing okay i just i feel like he's like a spoiler i don't feel like he ever he looks like a democrat to me chris christie's just like a democrat he just feels like i think it might literally just be the new jersey accent i could just never see chris christie representing republican anything anywhere um I don't know why. This is a feeling I have. I feel like he will never climb past like 25% of Republican polls. I may, I could be wrong, but I just super, I don't know. That's just my feeling. I could be totally fucking wrong with that, but um, yeah, we'll see. I, maybe I'll adjust this. Afterwards, I'm not going to look at the 538 stuff until I'm done. We'll see how much it lines up with my view of this. A live look at the Reagan Library as the sun sets in Simi Valley, California. We'll see you there next month when our colleagues at Fox Business host the next 2024 showdown. Fox Business is partnering with Univision, the Reagan Foundation, and Rumble to bring you the second Republican presidential debate on September 27th. It looks pretty nice there. 20 years ago. 70% of American adults said they were extremely proud to be an American. That number has now plummeted to just 39%. In his pitch to get to the Oval Office, President Reagan called Deepak? America the shining... If Deepak wants to chat at the end of this, we can, but he might be streaming on Twitch and we can't. ...and optimism. So in your closing statement tonight, please tell American voters why you are the person who can inspire this nation oh, to a messaging. better day. These are 45 seconds, and we begin with Governor Burgum. I understand why America's hurting. Biden's inflation is choking us. I grew up in a small town. This guy hasn't done like when I was freshman horribly. in high school. I'll just my mom, widow of three, went back to work. Sorry. 
Every job I had growing up was one where I took a shower at the end of the day, not at the beginning of the day. Our, our cities are less safe because of the fentanyl pouring into this country. Our economy is being crushed by Biden's energy it's policies, which are raising the cost either. of every product you buy, not just the gasoline at the pump. One thing that I'll do as president, His last name is I'll so secure bad. the border. President Burgum. Not it sounds like the right now. It sounds like the name of a bad guy in like an alien flick or thing something. Is for I don't sure know. Like the Burgums in the Badlands in North Dakota. I don't know. It looks it like, like the bug? horizon is just limitless. And when you can almost see beyond that horizon, you can see that this great country, our future is unlimited. But we've got to focus on innovation, not Burger. regulation. We've got to cut the red tape. We've got to drive ourselves mm -hmm. forward. The way we win the Cold War with China is by growing our economy and through innovation. And as president, I will bring out the best of America. I will improve every American life. Governor well, we Hutchinson. hope you're back on your horse soon, Governor. <laughs> Governor Hutchinson. Our nation is in trouble. And it's in trouble because of failed leadership. I don't know what this guy is like. the solution is not four more years President of Joseph Biden. President Biden meets Forrest the Gump. The solution I don't know. is not four more years of Donald Trump. I haven't felt anything from the this guy. The solution is new leadership that can bring bold ideas to America and to bring out the best of America. A president's number one responsibility is to bring out the best of our people. That's what Ronald Reagan did. And he did it with optimism and hope for our country, with a consistent conservatism. That's exactly what I bring. As president, I'll bring out the best of America in terms of individual responsibility, building our economy, in terms of securing our border, enforcing the rule of law. I'll bring out the best of America in terms of our national character, our faith, and our hope for the future. Join in this fight, asa2024.com. Thank you. Senator Scott. Thank you. I was a disillusioned young man growing up in a single parent household mired in poverty. I wondered if the American dream was real for a kid like me. I can stand before you today and say the dream is alive, it is well, right, and mind. it is healthy. Uh, I'm putting I have all the guys good on fortune dark of a mom who works 16 hour <laughs> days making sure we have food on our tables. She taught me that if you're able bodied in America, you work. If you take out a loan, you pay it back. If you commit a violent crime, you go to jail. And if God made you a man, you play sports against men. I'm Tim Scott. I'm asking you for your vote. And if you're in Iowa, I'm asking you to caucus for me. You can go to votetimscott.com for more information or to make a contribution. Governor Christie. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Martha. Look, everybody on this stage wants to be the next president of the United States. And the only way that's going to happen is if we beat Joe Biden. I'm the only one on this stage who's ever beaten the Democratic incumbent in an election. I did it in a deep blue state, being outspent three to one. Beating a Democratic incumbent is not easy. The last Democratic incumbent president who was defeated was Jimmy Carter. And he was defeated by a conservative governor from a blue state who knew how to get results who stood for the truth, who cared about accountability, and stood strong and hard against waste. Those are the very things that I did in my eight years as governor of New Jersey, and it's exactly what I'll do as president of the United States. Believe me, the Democrats want some other nominee who's never beaten the Democratic incumbent. I'm the one who can win this race, and if you give me the chance, I will restore our country by winning it. Thank you. Governor Haley. Several weeks ago, I dropped my husband, Michael, a combat veteran from Afghanistan, off at 4 a.m. for another year-long deployment. I watched him and 230 soldiers pick up their two duffel bags of belongings to go to a country they had never been, all in the name of protecting America. If they are willing to protect us from there, we should be willing to fight for America here. I will beat Joe Biden, and he knows that. I will strengthen our economy, and we'll bring this inflation down. We will put transparency in the classroom. We will secure our borders. We will have the backs of our law enforcement, and we will make sure we have a strong national security. And once again, we will make sure we have an America that is strong and proud. We have a country to save. Join us. Go to NikkiHaley.com, and let's get it done. I feel like she had a good showing tonight. I think she's I think she's done well tonight. 
Thank you, Brad and Martha, for this evening. It's an honor to be here. Joe Biden has uh, weakened America at home and abroad. The disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, their war on energy, runaway spending that launched the worst inflation in 40 years, a crisis at our southern border, an assault on our values and liberties, and the American people have had enough. But I know we can bring it back. But different times call for different leadership. The Republican Party owes the American people the choice. Proven leadership at the national level that knows how to move a conservative agenda forward. We proved in the Trump-Pence years you can turn this country around faster than you can imagine. And I have faith we will again. Because I have faith in the American people. The good, decent, hard-working, faith-filled, idealistic people of this country. And I have faith that God is not done with America yet. And if we will renew our faith in one another and renew our faith in Him who has ever guided this nation since we arrived on these wilderness shores. I know the best days for the greatest nation on earth are yet to come. Wow. Thank you. Mr. Ramaswamy. I was born in 1985, and I grew up into a generation where we were taught to celebrate our diversity and our differences so much that we forgot all of the ways we are really just the same as Americans, bound by a common set of ideals that set this nation into motion in 1776. And this is our moment to revive those common ideals. God is real. There are two genders. Fossil fuels are a requirement for human prosperity. Reverse racism is racism. An open border is not a border. Parents determine the education of their children. This like the slogan master. The nuclear master. <laughs> family is the greatest form of governance known to man. Capitalism lifts us up from poverty. There are three branches of government, not four. And the U.S. Is Constitution the branch, is, is the, the media, strongest or? guarantor of freedom in human history. That is what won us the American Revolution. That is what will win us the revolution of 2024. Oh, three-letter agencies. Okay, okay, gotcha. The deep state. Governor DeSantis. Governor? This is our time for choosing. We will send Joe Biden back to his basement and we will reverse the decline of this country. I'm a blue collar kid. I work minimum wage jobs to be able to make ends meet. I understand the importance of the American dream, and I know how that slipped away from so many millions of Americans will restore it. I'm a veteran who served in Iraq. I know what it means to put service above self. I'm also a dad and a husband to six, five, and three-year-old. I understand the importance of protecting parents' rights and the well-being of our children. In Florida, we showed it could be done. I made promises, and I delivered on all of those promises. 2024 is make or break. We're not getting a mulligan. No excuses. I will get the job done. And as your president, I will not let you down. God bless you all. Well, we want to say thank you. Thank you to all the candidates on the stage tonight. And thank you to Milwaukee. Thank you, everybody. We will see you on the campaign trail from debates to primaries to the general election and the conventions before that. Thanks for joining us. Sean Hannity from the Spin Room starts right now. Take it away, Sean. Take it away, Sean. All right. Well, thank you both, by the way. Great job, Martha and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I guess just to summarize, DeSantis is like... DeSantis is like on his own on stage. Um, he, I, I don't even know if he was in a debate with other people. Did he, did he ever talk to another person on stage ever? Did that happen a single time? It must have during Florida's um, COVID stuff ever. Destiny Benel Gorenson the second. Hello, David the Pack Pacman, Argentinian Pacman the first, my YouTube friend. What's up? You're gonna have to workshop that a little bit, I think. I don't know that. I'm that's workshopping it right now here. on stage. How are you doing today, buddy? Are you live streaming on some platform now? What do you mean on some platform? Are you? Do you live stream anymore? I forget. I'm live. Oh, me too. Listen, I don't I don't even necessarily want to talk about the debate because our time is always so short and it, we have all these restrictions because of the bans on different platforms. I've not been things. the only platform I've been on Twitch. Are you streaming on Twitch right now? I'm no, I'm not. I'm getting 
so many people that write to me uh-huh. essentially just attacking me for associating you, whatever the hell that means, yeah. because of X, Y, Z thing that you've said. And the list is so wild. I don't know. Are any of these things true? You've become a right winger. You now hate the left, including me. You are now playing coy with white supremacists. Are any of these things true? All of those and more. Every bad thing you think about me is true and more than that, David. Are you being serious? No. Why would you think I'm being serious? Oh, I don't. So, like, you haven't denounced the left or something? No, I'm a goddamn progressive. I'm the only guy out here on the front lines fighting this war, okay, David? Okay, uh, taking on a little bit of a weird tone, but how'd you um? Who do you think were your standouts for tonight? I'm curious. Sorry, the standouts. Yeah, like who do you think had a who who came away the victors from here? Give me like your I think topic. Trump was the biggest winner tonight. Honestly, you really think so? Listen, the first half of the debate, I think Vivek was strong. And then it started to become clear that he's out of his mind. And Nikki Haley really made him not look so good. And then it seemed the moderator stayed away from him a little bit more. So what I, if it had been an hour debate, I think he would have been the clear winner. It's less clear to me. I had high expectations for Chris Christie. He had a few good moments and some pretty bad ones. And then I think the overperformer, like I think the guy is disgusting and just pathetic. But I think the guy who performed better than I expected was, to some degree, Mike Pence, as weird as that is. Okay. I think we probably largely agree. I am I will say I'm really happy that this Vivek guy is out now because he's just like, I can immediately know if I can write off a person's entire opinion about politics if they're like a new Vivek fan because I can already see like all of the old Trump people and all of like the kind of newer like far right people and like ultra populist people gathering around him. So I'm glad that he's on stage now so I can immediately identify the craziest people on the uh, conservative side of things. I um, don't disagree. The my, my stream was like invaded by the Vivek fans and they were it was just kind of annoying more than anything. Yeah. I, it's even annoying. At first, when I saw him talking, it was like, oh, wow, it's like the Andrew Yang of the right. But I don't think Andrew Yang is anywhere near as insane or horrible as this guy is. 100%. Oh, my goodness. Jesus. There is the there is like a tech entrepreneur element that yeah. links him to Yang. But ideologically, I mean, this guy seems nuts to me. Yeah, well, yeah, he's like a, he's he is like. Remember how a few years ago we were all like, I wonder what politics is going to look like after Trump. People like yeah. Vivek are the next generation, the younger. Right. The, I want to abolish every part of the government. I want a revolution, not an incremental improvement. Uh, I want all foreign policy needs to be off the table. We need to redo everything. Like that, he's like that next stage of uh, a populist, like people on the right. I think. And it's um, crazy that I don't know if you saw the moment where. Martha McCallum read like 12 departments and, and agencies he wanted to eliminate. And with a straight face, he goes, yes, that's correct. And people in the crowd cheer. Yeah. It's such an unserious thing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, I know. It's, it, it's the, it is the populist take, right? Yeah. Um, he also yeah. wants to raise the voting age to like 25, doesn't he, or something? <laughs> It's so funny. He wants to be the candidate of the next generation uh-huh. and also not let you vote unless you're 25 years old. It's like, but it, this is just crazy. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, running him down real quick. This, I guess these are my quick thoughts on everybody. I thought, I feel like DeSantis is in his own world. Uh, he's writing off his Wait, record. Like, like, I don't think he talked to another person this entire debate. I'm not even sure if he did. Um, Vivek, I agree with you. Very strong first impression. In the beginning, I was like, I think this might be his standout moment. He's going to yeah. come off really strong. And then he just completely just disappeared for the last like hour of that debate. I noticed something that he's good with the slogans like Trump, but he's very bad with like the witty comebacks. Almost yes. every single time he got into a back and forth uh, with Christie, he didn't do well. With Pence, he With Haley, he got, I think he got slaughtered. Um, oh, that was the worst moment for him. It seemed like the wind was let out of his sails when yeah. Haley basically schooled him yeah. Oof, yeah um i feel like pence did decent he's already like a very well-known candidate but i don't think he stumbled yeah. at all i think he sounds like good as he sounds very presidential and everything um i feel like nikki haley had a strong showing i haven't i'm gonna be honest i've been in crazy red pill space and everything i haven't followed politics as much so i hadn't heard as much about her but i feel like all of her answers were pretty good and she came off well and even on an anti-trump platform which she yeah. gave quite a few 
pretty anti-Trump answers tonight. Um, she seemed to to do well with the crowd, and I think she was really strong. Her back and forth with Vivek was really strong too. Um, he got the least grief from the crowd when she went anti-Trump by yes, far. Yeah. I mean, at one point, it seemed like Chris Christie was going to be booed off the stage. <laughs> yeah. I, Chris Christie, I thought, did good, but I can never rate this guy higher than a medium because he just doesn't look like a Republican to me. He feels like a Democrat just in the way that yeah. he talks. Yeah, I, I feel like he's just there to, like, torpedo candidates like he did with Rubio and stuff. I feel like that's <laughs> all he exists for. Um, you know, I, I, I think that if you said to me one of those eight people will be the next president, I would pick Chris Christie every <laughs> single time. I don't think he has any serious shot, but I um, do hope that at some point in this whole process, he single-handedly destroys another candidate's chances <laughs> to the point where they have to drop out the next day again. I would love to see that. Yeah. For the uh, the last three, Tim Scott, the, is it Asa or Asia or Asa, Asa, Asa Hutchinson? Hutchinson? Yeah, and then Doug Burgum. I feel like nothing against any of these guys. Well, against all of them because they're all Republicans, but like, I feel like they just needed to do more to set themselves apart. I feel like all three of them yeah. are very forgettable. Um, There's this self-fulfilling prophecy where if you're not polling as well, you don't get to talk as much, which mm -hmm. makes it impossible to gain support, you know? Yeah, but but then also you have to do more when you're on stage to set yourself apart from other people. Like when you get on and just kind of give like the standard conservative talking points and you're already yeah. like not that well known, you know? I like I think Vivek had a good strategy of like I, everyone here is bought and paid for. I'm the only non-Super PAC candidate, right? Setting himself apart. Yeah. Uh, my if I were a one percenter, like if I just barely made it in, like Hutchinson or Burgum, mm -hmm. I would I would like try to workshop something a little wacky to do to try to at least generate some attention. I and I don't I'm not saying wacky like dressing a certain way, but maybe like something like Vivek, like going up there and going, listen, these people are so afraid of me, they're not even gonna give me a chance to talk. Just watch. I challenge you, count talk time. And it's like, of course you're not gonna get as much time, yeah. but you're creating a story that might be interesting and maybe we'll make it into the news cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Know. I feel like my favorite moment from the entire debate was the, <laughs> it was the, uh, when they asked to raise your hand, I think if you would support Trump if he got nominated and the right half of the room instantly, I think did it. Uh, and then, like, the people on the left half were, like, waiting for the responses. And then I think very yeah. slowly, I think it was DeSantis Christie, and I think Pence raised his hand, but I couldn't tell if they were, like, doing a thing or not. That was really funny. Um, they know, didn't make I that big deal. I missed that video. moment <laughs> because we were using the foxnews.com stream, and uh -huh. the commercials went 20 or 30 seconds too long oh, and no. overlapped with the debate. So I literally missed what you're describing. Oh, shit. It was really funny. Yeah, because they were like, who would support him? And the, the left half of the room all raised their hand, or the right stage yeah. left, right hand did. And then on the other side, they were kind of waiting for the audience response to get their hands up there. I thought it was really funny. But What did you think about the chat GPT moment with Christy? <laughs> I thought it was funny. I kept I, I always get really scared when I watch people. I Because everybody on that stage has got to have like horror moments of like the Rubio moment. When Chris Christie yeah. just like single handedly kamikaze him off the stage. And I feel like he's always <laughs> loading really up fun. like for the. Yeah, it was a good. It was a funny comment. Yeah, what's the skinny guy with an eyeless name doing it? The last guy they did was Barack Obama. It was like, yeah, true. Yeah, and then the chat yeah, GPT comment. It wasn't it, bad. Yeah. It really wasn't bad. Christie's really Where good with those Where are you on, like, well. is this good or bad for Trump with Trump <laughs> absent? Um, Man, I, dude, I I just never know. Conservatives are just <laughs> insane, man. I don't know. I feel like, and I keep saying this, and I, I think I'll be right, but I could be wrong, but I feel like all the indictments, all the drama— all this nonsense is just it's weighing on conservatives and i think that if a new person can like blossom out of these debates like a vivek i think people yeah. will jump ship because it's just so much it's so much with trump i think there's two sides mm -hmm. one side is republicans saw what it's like to have a conversation among republicans with no trump present mm -hmm. and they might like it and they might go hey we could like go back to this if we just don't vote for the guy so i think that's potentially dangerous for trump on yeah. the other hand, no one did so well, and the crowd was a pretty heavily pro-Trump crowd as well, mm -hmm. that this might just reinforce the idea that, like, we're not really that excited by the other options. We're going to stick with Trump. Yeah, potentially. We'll see. I, I feel like every new Trump indictment is strengthening his uh, fervor with his most stringent supporters or the, the, yep. the ones that are most loyal. But I feel like it's trimming off more and more from the outside. So as these debates keep happening and we get more standout performances from people and maybe the I, I'm sorry, I guess I haven't been following politics for as long. But like, has it always been the case that these debates have like 10 people on stage? 
Have we ever at had the beginning? It's pretty common. Yeah, at the beginning, it's pretty common because the the requirements to get in are so low. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. I feel like um, especially once we get down to like four or five, and we start trimming some of the the Scotts, Hutchinsons, and the Burghams. No offense to those guys, but yeah, I, maybe seeing these guys go deeper into the debates will be interesting. Yeah. Also, Absolutely. I feel like DeSantis's fan base. I feel like that is a fan base that's up for grabs because he's very popular because he's got all the recognition from everything from Florida for the past few years. But, yeah. oh, man, I was really big on the, like, I think DeSantis can do it. I think he's uh, I think he actually has the capacity to take out Trump and blah, blah, blah. I changed my mind, I think, a few months ago. It was the first time I saw him walk into a restaurant and start talking to voters. And I was oh, like, oh, painful. my God, yeah, it's not him. It will never be him. Literally, no matter what, it is. the answer will never be Ron DeSantis. Oh, my God. No, those those are it's like it, it, I enjoy how party's failing and it's still a little bit painful to see him like interact with people. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Yeah. Hey, um, I, before we run out of time in the sense that I'm going to bed soon, mm -hmm. uh, I want to check in with you about one other thing. I, I see constantly you're debating this person. You're debating that person. You're debating vegans. You're debating anti-feminists. You're debating um, you know, you're confronting Hassan. You're on. Uh, I'm looking at your thing now. You you were with Stitch and then uh, Ethan and uh, like, are you just traveling around, do basically doing debates at this point? Is this the big thing you're doing? Uh, well, like from com <laughs> it's completely tangential. But my content growth strategy for the past year uh, has basically been to do as many large shows from as many different communities as possible. Because the more new eyes you put yourself in front of, the better it is to get exposed to yep. new audiences. Um, and I'm, I have an interest in a wide variety of issues anyway, so it's easy to move to these other areas and have conversations across a lot of platforms too. So yeah, that's basically is the been uh, is the like schlepping around getting annoying. Uh, I mean, I basically at this point I fly out to LA once a month anyway. Um, so I'm kind of used to it at this point. I usually I'll fly out to LA. I'll do like anywhere from three to six shows, and then I fly back to Florida, stream, do my thing. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. So you're just like in the, you're just doing it basically. Mm -hmm. And has the strategy worked? Yeah, this is like the last year has definitely been my most explosive year for growth for sure. Oh, interesting. Very, very interesting. I, I'm just like it's not that I'm lazy, but it's just like. I'd rather concentrate and just be in the studio and do my show. And then when I travel, just actually like be on vacation. You know what I mean? Oh, I hate vacation. I'm like very much like a work. If I like taking vacation is very hard for me. I want to pick up my phone and work on stuff and do stuff all the time. So, yeah. But that's good that um, you can. It's probably good to disconnect now. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think it is. I've seen the pictures of you and your child. Like, very adorable. I don't know if that's appropriate oh, to say. Oh, yeah, that, I, yeah. I'm like, I'm a father now, I guess, yeah. is technically what they're telling me, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'd say the reports are in, and that does seem to the be the uh, consensus. That seems to be the thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any advice of any kind? Um, usually don't drop them. Don't forget to water them at least once every three days. Um, yeah. yeah, if CPS starts coming around, you know, find out which neighbor's calling the cops on you. You know, basic stuff like that, yeah. All seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. Are you, um, are, is there a possibility of another child in your future? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's always possibilities. Well, but, but you know you... what I'm saying. Is it something you're, oh, you're trying to avoid? Oh, would I want to avoid? have a child? Oh, well, we'll avoid right now, yeah. I think at some point when my um, wife gets a little bit older, when we slow down a little bit, we might want to. That sounded like I have a child bride. I, what I mean is that when we're at a stage in our life where we're done advancing our careers so heavily, we might want to, yeah. like, slow down and have a child. That's what I meant. It, got it, got it. Okay, <laughs> so, but for the time being, you're, you're actively avoiding it, it sounds Yeah, like. I would say, yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. Well, listen, um, you still on the pork at breakfast? Is that still a thing? I remember last time we got together, it was just pork coming out of the wazoo. Do we not, are we anti-pork for breakfast? Is that like a thing for you? No, no, it was just, it's it's still in my mind where you, you know, they're usually like bacon or sausage and you said, give me both, I'll pay extra. And it was just jarring to me. Well, listen, I grew up on good diner food like IHOP and usually at IHOP there's usually like an advanced egg breakfast or like a sampler breakfast where you can do like because I think didn't IHOP used to have a meal where you could get two small slices of ham two pieces of bacon and two pieces of sausage links I've never been I mean it's I've been to Denny's and it sounds like a Denny's thing. you've never, been, never to been to IHOP, IHOP before no never why would you want just one type of pork for breakfast when you can have like two or three yeah no that's fair that's fair yeah uh, where are you on turkey bacon, for or against? Honestly, for you should probably always eat turkey bacon if you can. It's probably better for you. It's less fatty, more lean. Those are the same thing. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah and no, it's good. I'm it's good. You. Yeah. I'm with you. Mm 
Mm-hmm. All right, my friend. Well, listen, I'll be in touch offline, and uh, I'm glad we were able to connect, albeit briefly tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, real quick, if you're bored, uh, when after we hang up, I sent you a tweet. That was the hand raising moment. I recommend watching it if you haven't. It's pretty. It's pretty funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's I'll about a minute long. Yeah. All right. I'll see you later. Cool. Good luck, buddy. Bye. All right. Take care. See you. There it goes. There it goes. David the Packer Pacman, 2024 recap. Okay. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> All right, why well, hey, listen? Oh, I should have asked him how he felt about getting DMC8 if he's worried about that at all. Jesus, I'm so paranoid. He had like over 200,000 viewers for the debate, so I could probably carry a lot of viewership for it, but I don't want to get I don't want to eat that. But we are going to take a brief moment and talk about the elephant not in the room. Former President Trump has been indicted in four different states on 91 counts. He will be processed tomorrow in Georgia at the Fulton County Jail for charges relating to the 2020 election loss. You all signed a pledge to support the eventual Republican nominee. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law, would you still support him as your party's choice? Please raise your hand if you would. (laughs) I like these guys raise their hands immediately. And then, and then DeSantis pops up. Then Pence comes up. <laughs> and then Christy, oh, he waves his finger. I didn't see that. Okay. <laughs> uh, this was, there wasn't that much attention paid to this, but I thought this moment was so fucking funny. I thought this was so funny. Oh my God. Wait, did, um, did Pac-Man watch this yet? I will be back tomorrow. What a day. Thank you for joining me. Don't bother with the hate mail. It's going right in. Oh, no, he's like, did he watch it? Jail, rather. We've got another skirt. That's where. Oh, he did watch it. Fuck. His choice. Please raise your hand if you would. (laughs) He's so slow. (laughs) Oh, this is bizarre. Oh, this is horrifying. So just be clear. Governor Christie, you were kind of late to the game there. Oh, man. And that's where that's where we tuned in. All right, everybody, listen, uh, it's been a long night. We've got another stream tomorrow when Trump gets booked in a full. <laughs> Somebody link this. Hold on. All those in favor. Terry, you unanimously. <laughs> That's a good quote. It reminded me of the. Uh... <laughs> um... <laughs> it reminded me of the the onion skit. Short of it is uh, that things are going to get bad before they get better well, I, I actually don't think the situation is quite with so the guys uh, responding to the, the live economy the live audience reaction the, uh, rebound yeah I agree you know I don't uh, believe in this gloom and doom stuff I think that the future is very bright yeah. you know as long as we all pull I, up our I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, just just to clarify I did not mean to say that the economy is in bad shape but didn't you just say that you believe it will continue to get worse I believe you said that right yeah. Technically, but worse. Yeah. what I meant to you say. Know, but the real this is such a good skit. Why did what happened to the onion? Why don't they make these anymore? Fuck. Doing better right now is because the hardworking Americans, yes. right, uh, are out there. You know, all they the- do. Really, I feel like the funniest onion skits are all like ten plus years old. Even on their channel, it's an eleven-year-old skit that they're showing here. I haven't watched any of the recent stuff. Maybe, maybe it is good. I don't know. Maybe I should. Yeah, but. All right. I love you guys. It's been fun.